we're here. Hey everybody, happy Friday and welcome to Three Flings, the only show on Twitch with three tieflings every Friday night. Three Flings is a collection of one shots from the Uncaged Anthology. So if this is your first episode or your 70th or beyond, welcome, you are all caught up. Today we are playing Call of a Mother by Anthony Beale from Uncaged Volume 3. And without further ado, let's meet our teeths, starting with Ink. Tell us about your teeth. Hi, my name is Ink. You may see me in chat or on Twitter as at these dead tents. As usual, I am playing Ophelia, your magical girl, packed of the tome warlock, a uh, fiend frog queen. <laughs> this is what she's here for now. Yeah. Gwen, tell us about your teeth. I'm playing Adara, our resident fighty bitey tiefling. She has no magic, but she won't let that stop her from starting trouble with her warg puppy crouton. And Zan, tell us about your teeth. I am playing Shylock, our resident knowledge cleric slash ranger, and she throws the book at her enemies because she is a globe trotting librarian that is searching for secrets. And she now has two books to throw at her enemies. One, her spiritual weapon, and two, her uh, bookworm, Mistorius. Would Mistorius be happy if Shy whipped, whipped them at someone? Well, I mean, I imagine they would think it would be kind of fun because they could fly through the air faster. Mistorius has, like, <laughs> dove into several combats, so I feel like it's not unreasonable to think that... Um... They're Paper dragon cool. to the face. Yeah. They're they're like cool <laughs> with, you know, exciting new circumstances. <laughs> so, I mean, I am I'm now imagining Shy like uh whipping Mysterious out like a paper air, airplane and then just letting them fly oh, good. and then turning into the Drake sized dragon. <laughs> oh, <light>. baby. <laughs> Very good. I like it. Uh so, uh, heads up, there are a couple content warnings for tonight's adventure, and these are fairly lengthy this week. Uh, it's going to feature arson, body horror, infanticide, maternity-related horror, and as always, there is the potential for snakes. So if any of those are going to be triggers for you or just things you don't want to deal with tonight, feel free to duck out, and we look forward to seeing you next week. So without further ado, who wants to give us a previously on Three Flings, we played Galatea as well by Luciella Elizabeth Scarlett. Oh, yes. Last week was the one with the with the weird dolls being created by Malion. Oh, yeah. Yep. And Shy was having difficulty uh, reconciling past events with dolls and current events with creepy dolls. Yes. Yes. It, Poor Shy. It's very disturbing for Shy. <laughs> so I don't particularly remember exactly. We opened how with with Shy just like finding a um, celestial being injured in a cave, uh, who introduced herself yeah. as Galatea, and she was like, "I need yes. help killing this necromancer." And we we're like, "Who's the necromancer?" And she was like, "His name's Malian." And Adar went, "That's on my to kill list." Um, so it's time <laughs> it's time and then we uh, almost immediately got attacked by dolls in the middle of the night yeah undead dolls. Not fun. undead uh, specifically. dolls and, and then we went after the necromancer <laughs> and found out that he created more sentient undead dolls but he he tended to kill the ones which he thought were imperfect um yeah, so we kind of convinced most of them to just let us fight Malian mm -hmm. and kill him. And, uh... <laughs> yeah, basically. And, and then Ophelia and Chai didn't really feel the need to kill any of the undead dolls. They didn't ask to be brought into this world like this, and they seemed mostly okay overall. Yes. Uh, Shy and Ophelia had some growth over Undead and the idea of, uh, the idea that you don't consent to being created. It's true. For lack of a better way. Uh, so yeah, then we dealt with 
we had Melion, who, uh, if you don't, if you didn't see the clip on our on our Twitter, mmm, mmm, he's, he's got a voice, bad voice. Just... But yeah, we um, all instantly hated him. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> fortunately, it turns out that he was a wizard, uh, so he was not hard to take out. He uh, went into the blender. He went into the blender, and he did not escape with his life. So, <laughs> that that kind of resolved that. And then we were like, alright, uh, undead doll women, you can, you know, continue living your lives if you want to pass on. Just uh, hit us up, I guess. <laughs> yes. Yeah, and uh, you ran into a familiar face at the end who yeah, told you yeah, about yeah. an upcoming competition. Yeah. And you draws. Yes, Harriet, who is like, hey, there's the, what is it? Is it the wreath or yeah. something? Yeah, Festival uh, of the Wreath. Festival of the Wreath, where it's like a talent show and a carnival and people bet on who it is that wins. And if you win, you get to be, what is it? Like the wreath bearer or something. And you get a wish spell if you win. Yes, mm -hmm. and uh, essentially how it was like, hey, I was going to go to it, and if you guys are participating, I will put money on you, because I trust that you can win. And we're like, okay, cool. Yeah. And now we're just walking along with Harriet, having a good time. Totally worth a point of inspiration uh, for y'all to share. As a reminder for anybody in chat, um, if my voice is quiet, I think it's because I had my mic facing the wrong direction. Uh, anybody in chat, you can use channel points to um, give anyone a crit, success or failure, including me. Sorry, I'm like totally off my game right now. And let's get started with Call of a Mother. You've been traveling along with Harriet a little bit, heading to the festival. When each of you is awakened in the night by the same lucid nightmare. Oh, another shared dream. This didn't go badly last time. Oh, boy. A tide of blood. Screams of women and infants. A cold, monstrous presence pressing against your minds. In the morning, black smoke rises over the tree line, pretending something dreadful. Mother's Hope a hospice for the care of pregnant women and newborns is burning. You move as swiftly as you can, uncertain of what horrors you will find when you arrive. On your way, Harriet just goes, wow, so I am not traveling with you anymore and I'll meet you at that festival because that was not what I bargained for. We're not that luck. This isn't our fault, what the fuck? Shy, Shy at this point, as soon as Ophelia says we're not bad luck, kind of almost says something, and then decides not to. We're not! You know what? You know what? I, I love that I know you. I love that I know you. But I'll see you at the festival. We'll meet up there. I'll put some coin down on you, but good luck with the fire and stuff. That seems more your pay grade than mine. Probably for the best. See you later, Harriet. Bye, Harriet. Please tell your friends we're not bad luck. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's like, yeah. as soon as she's out of earshot, Shai, Shai just says, I'm pretty sure that's a lie. Considering what? how many ships that have sunk with us on them. Not our fault. It's not, it's not our like, fault. It's, it's not, not our, our fault, fault that we show up, we people can't... can't take care of stuff. That's not our fault. Maybe the ocean doesn't like fault, us. But that doesn't mean we're not bad luck. No, if it's- We can't control luck. If we're bad luck, then it's still our fault. I'm maintaining that a luck-inducing being has it out for us, and that's different, because then it's their fault. Uh, yes, they're called gods. We're not bad luck, though. I don't know which god is the one about luck, um, but, you know, we can just- There are a couple. We can give them all a stern talking to at some point, probably. I'm sure that, you know, that's a thing that regular mortals do. I <laughs> well, they would call praying. <laughs> I'm going Who the hell is time to, to pray? Make some donations to some temples. Maybe it will help offset things. All right. Another pizza? You do that. Is, do you think that, um, 
burning building we saw is like current? Should we be moving faster? Well, I oh. was assuming this was happening as we were moving because okay. no way am I stopping. Does it smell like anything is burning as we walk? Sure does. And uh, without taking too long, you arrive at the burned husk of a building collapsed in on itself and ravaged by fire. Shit. Oh. Standing amidst the rubble is a female drow in a smock. Her body is covered in cuts and abrasions, and her smock is covered in dirt, plant matter like she's been in the brush. She's pulling a large chest from the rubble and uh, a looks about to open it when uh, you all approach. Shai is going to run forward and just say, what happened here? She throws the chest open and pulls out a rapier. Oh, uh, hi. Uh, are you okay? I move up also. <laughs> Did you come back to finish us off? Um, what? we did not have anything to do with this. We just arrived here. I feel like there's a lot of assumptions being made today. It's like, why would I ask what happened here if we were <clears throat> here before? Hey, you're right. I'm sorry. I panicked. Um, I'm, and she lowers the rapier. My name is Karhita. I'm, I was, and looks around at the destitution surrounding her. One of the midwives here at Mother's Hope. May I? And Chai just makes to step forward, holding out her hand. You're hurt. So, it'll be alright. I'm fine. Uh, I'm worried about the other midwives. There was a woman, Eliana, mercenary, well, captain of a group of mercenaries she this was her work i'd swear by it she uh she said for years there was an evil presence coming from the hospice and told everyone to stay away warned anyone she could to stay away from here about three days ago eliana's daughter went into labor she didn't send her here until it was too late. Her daughter and the child were both lost, and Eliana and her crew started a fire. Well, that doesn't At seem very fair. Obligatory. Well, the mention Do I of believe an her? evil presence. Ooh. I was going to say, at the mention of an evil presence, Shy would attempt to um, sense any thing that could possibly be an evil presence within a mile? Like um, a demon? This is the uh, ranger thing where I sense demons or angels or what What are all of them? The... Celestials, fey, fiends, undead? And Adara, give me that insight. Check. Yeah. Oh. Oh, 25. <laughs> okay. She seems astonishingly forthright to you. Hmm. All right. Um, but, you know, she's a 400-year-old woman whose uh, home and place of work was just burned down. <clears throat> so, 400. Uh, I have to recalibrate my mental image. 400 isn't that... I don't think it's that old for an elf. Yeah, I suppose. I'll think do drow age the same as elves? They are elves. Okay. They are elves. So yeah, they're just they're just uh, like underdog elves. Mm. Yeah. All right. So um, it's within a mile. Yes, and it's just basically what all is within a mile of here. It's like aberrations, celestials, dragons, elementals, fey, fiends, and undead. Just if I could send anything. My dumb brain is like, you walk faster than a mile in an hour, right? <laughs> yes. I think yes. so. Yes, so you don't sense anything. Okay. I was going to say, I don't think we would. Now we know the dragon walked out of here. 
<laughs> but but also we know that there isn't anything within a mile of us right now, so we're yes. not going to get ambushed. Um, I'm gonna turn. What's the what's the draw woman's name again? Carhita. Carhita. I'll uh, drop it in the in the Twitch chat. Thank you. Hey. Um, so um, it, did every uh, what happened to everyone else? Did anyone else get out, or was it just you? Well. Everyone, I sent the rest of uh, the crew here, the midwives, to scatter into the woods. Um, including me, there were ten of us. I... I was coming to get my old sword and search for them. There's a small cave nearby where they might have found shelter. I... I understand Ileana's grief. And I understand her pain. I I don't hold it against her. I, I of course, of course, I wish she hadn't burned down the fucking building. But yeah, it, losing your child and your grandchild so suddenly could make even the least hot-headed among us a little bit upset. So I just want to make sure that no one comes to harm. Well, in that case, we should probably track them and see where they went. Thank you. You'll... You'd come with me? Yeah, sure. Yes. Yeah, we did get a dream about this place burning, so... And Chai at that point would go, oh... I didn't realize this was another shared dreamed experience. Oh, why do you this think was... Harriet ran from us? She mentioned a burning building. I just kind of assumed we all got it. Um, but yeah, so, you know, we're, we seem to be involved. Uh, or perhaps, to rephrase in a way that doesn't make us sound like arsonists, um, we seem to be... Uh, Directed? Compelled to yeah. help. Well, it's a good thing you were in the area, I suppose. Although, I sp it would have been nice if you'd been here before the fire, but, well. And she looks down at her feet and says, We know that not everyone is. There's really no one looking out for us. Let's go. Oh, um, you now. <laughs> Hmm? We're here now. Were you about to say something, Shy? I was just kind of wondering if Shy would be able to decipher that look and that phrase, because that seemed rather interesting. And in that, was she making a comment about the gods not looking out for them, or just in Check. general? Oh, insight? Yeah. Yeah, that's a 25. Sure seemed like uh, somebody has lost their faith. Okay. I mean, understandable. This is rather awful. <laughs> um, yeah, no, not going to touch on that. Shai is not the person to try and restore another person's faith. Uh, and if the cleric won't do it, none of us will. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll see if there's an opportunity later on, but at this point, any platitudes Shy's likely to come up with are going to come across as not totally sincere or not really compelling. Um, oh, e even if Shy is is sincere. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll figure it out. <laughs> We'll figure it out. Um, Walking. Oh, go ahead. What were you going to say? No, I was just going to say, we'll figure it out. It's okay. <laughs> so walking through uh, the woods, she's like, so are you a mercenary band? Uh, like Eliana? I guess. Are we? I guess. We're but... more troubleshooters. 
we're problem solvers for money, so yeah. Sound like yeah. mercenaries to me. Same. But I we mean, generally try other avenues than fighting. If yeah, at that's all why possible. I don't. That's why I don't know if I'd call us mercenaries because we don't like to fight. We've got responsible heads on our shoulders, but we're probably mercenaries. Here's the business card. <laughs> <laughs> you have business cards? Yeah, I've had them for, like, 60 episodes. Oh, do you still have that bit on there about no missing persons? No yeah. probably missing shouldn't have handed people. For... <laughs> yeah, I'm sick of those. You probably should have handed that one over. Um, we're making a special exception for you. We're investigating arson. It's different. <clears throat> well, everybody has something they specialize in. Yeah, and ours and is not that one. plus these people have been kidnapped. They're not technically just missing. That's true. We know where they are, probably. Hopefully, yeah. As you start walking, you see this hill ahead that looks like um, two legs, their knees up, and a large belly, almost like a pregnant woman lying on her back with her knees up. And you enter uh, about where it looks like she would be giving birth. This is a weird rock formation. What'd you say? I say, this is a weird rock formation. I mean, it's weirdly thematic. Anybody can give me a survival check. Sure. Like. <laughs> oh yeah, let's see how great yep. this goes for us. <laughs> I'll do that. I'm sure the ranger has it covered. Oh, actually not that bad. <laughs> Yep, that's a 22. I get a 15. I got right. a 5. So Adara, uh, taken aback by the strange rock formation, you don't notice what the other two do, which are several small, like, slipper prints leading into the cave, as well as heavy boot prints. No tracks lead out of the cave. What? Okay. what? Okay, just a quick question. Before we go anywhere else, what is going on in chat? <laughs> <laughs> what is going on in here? Chat's trying to, you know, identify uh, the parts of the mountain. At your cervix. <laughs> okay, sure. Ahem. <sighs> so, yep, looks like we are going to be entering the mountain cave. Is it, like, in between the legs? It does seem Ooh. to be that way. Yeah, this is the cave I was thinking of. Has oh, it going? Oh, go ahead. What are you gonna say? Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, has it always looked like this, or did people carve it to look like this, or is this just a happy accident? Well, uh, I'm not really sure, but... It must be why they put um, uh, the hospice for women here. You know, mothers, mother's hope, maternity. Mm. Got to be something there. All right. Yeah, that's that's entirely fair. Um, kid, I make a history check for this region. Sure. I'm pretty sure that people would talk about this cave. <laughs> okay. History. Uh, 28. Eight, dang. Okay. Yeah, you, um, know about Mother's Hope being founded by a former order of paladins that's now extinct called the Order of Sacred Light. Hmm. Most of their uh, deal is lost to history, but that's what you know. Hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah, this is a bit of a weird situation. Um, what, what else, uh, other than the footprints, or is it just the footprints? Going just into the cave. The, just the footprints going into the cave. Okay. How um how recent do they look? Quite. Okay. Um so looking go in, 
uh, Karhita looks around and says, well, this is, this is new. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I've never seen this. What? Where is everyone? Um, what do I see when I look in? The cave is very shallow and small, so if anyone was in here, you would be able to see them. What Karhita is confused by is a doorway framed by um, pieces of stone carved with arcane runes, and the runes are now cracked. Mm. Oh. oh. I'm going to want to check out those runes. I'm wondering if they were concealing the doorway. Also yeah. wanted to know what those are. <laughs> yeah, give me uh, an arcana and or history check. Anybody can do those. Yeah. Don't mind if I do. <laughs> Both I of know. those are bad. Okay, that's the 16. And I could do either arcana or history. So whatever uh, Ink doesn't choose. I got a 9 for arcana, so... Doing good. My bonus is the same, but I rolled great. I got a 21. <laughs> okay. So, you both succeeded, so I'll just tell you what you got. <laughs> okay. You I'm going to assume that... Better. I'm going <laughs> to assume that Shy did the arcana, because yeah. I don't think Adaro would care about it. No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> good. Uh, so, Adara... Or shy, sorry. You can tell that these were, uh, you were correct, and these were a very powerful illusion spell that's been shattered. Adara, checking out the stonework, um, and knowing a lot about stoneworking, somehow, I, I think because you've been planning, uh, building your bar, yeah, you know all about architecture, yeah, I've been talking to a you lot know of people. That, the tools and techniques used to construct this door haven't been used for over a thousand years. Oh, shit. Uh, these are like old-timey runes, Shy. Oh, it was a very powerful concealment spell. Um, I imagine it's pretty old. Yeah, like... I still feel weird standing in here. It'll wear off. It Yeah, it just feels very unusual, because it's like, wow, I haven't felt this in 20 plus years. Like, in any case, it looks like the concealment was really the uh, door's defense, so I think we should probably go on through. Yeah. Because they, uh, the people that were in here haven't come out the cave entrance, so they must have gone further in. Yeah. Um, I'll I agree. go first. I mean, Is it does it seem like narrow or wide enough for multiple people? So you're opening the door. I uh, I probably want to check the actual door for traps, given that we can see it now. Um, okay. But I think the plan is to go through the door once we've confirmed that the door itself is safe. Um, ooh, terrible. 19. Terrible? I rolled <laughs> okay, with advantage sure. and got a 6. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the door appears untrapped. Alright. Uh, probably clear. I'm gonna say. And <laughs> open the door. Okay. Yeah, sure, why not? We gotta go up the tubes. Wait a second, hang on. Depending on where it is, I don't know if it go up into the- unless it splits, then it's the tubes. Unless not, then it's just inaccurate at the a certain Yeah, point. it's it's unclear on if we're currently in the vagina or the uterus. I mean, we went in, so I'm gonna say uterus. Like, if we're, like, in the, where the body would be, it'd be the uterus. I think we're thinking way too hard about this. Where's the T-intersection, <laughs> Jess? We know there's gonna be one. <laughs> Like, the I first think... T intersection? <laughs> uh, I'm thinking hard enough about this, Shy. What's your marching order? Uh, Adara volunteered to go first. Okay. Shy would probably be middle. I guess I'm coming in last, then. Gonna shut okay. the door behind us. 
And um, Carhita will go behind you, Ophelia. Mm -hmm. She goes, you know, I'm... I've lost a lot of the powers I used to have, but I'm still pretty good in a fight. Mm. Well, we didn't really doubt you. You, you seemed very uh, confident when you pulled out the rapier, so... I was assuming you were, you were trained in some way. Um. Yes. Uh. I left the priesthood, but um. I still have a little bit of, we say, fight in these old bones. Hmm. I'll keep you safe. Oh, thank you. That's very reassuring. So the corridor goes on for about a hundred feet and then opens into a small, dark, mank, mank, is that the word I'm looking for? Murky, dank. murky chamber. Murky dank? Murky dank. and dank, thank you. <laughs> monkey. M a monkey chamber. <laughs> uh, it smells moldy and there's kind of just dripping and it's a little bit slimy. There's two arches leading out of the chamber on the left and on the right. So this is accurate. We found the tea. <laughs> we found it, everybody. Is it good? Um, um, can Chai see any footprints to indicate which direction um, our quarry has gone? Whoa. Can you? Give me a survival check. And Actually, before you do that, let me tell you more about this chamber. Oh, okay. In the corner, there is a massive, grotesque, eight-foot-tall statue uh, that features a winged demon holding an immense staff of some sort in his right hand. Oh. Uh... That's not something Shy would be expecting in here. Um, well, we found the inaccurate part. Yeah, Shy, who's that? Can, can I determine who that is? Give me a religion check. Ophelia, Holding. same question. Who's that? Uh, let's see if I know. Uh, thinking, 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 thinking. I got a 12. Religion, 26. There we go. You both recognize this um Ophelia you might he might have been at your baptism or something this is Orcus the demon prince of the undead a demon prince would not come to Ophelia's baptism he's a Air fiend quotes. he is a fiend but <laughs> demons and devils hate each other more than any other set of beings as a category I'm just mom is like super charismatic yeah the mom is super charismatic all right <laughs> he made an exception uh it was very awkward I mean, we also have, what is it? Who was it? Gary, the, the, the skull, the bone the skull. devil. Yeah, the bone devil. But that's uh, a devil that we also hate, and he is a he. He is a devil. So freaking eh. Gary. Like is not like. <laughs> oh, uh, I like Melon saying it's a fancy IUD. Oh no! Uh, no! Please! <laughs> Oh. I was gonna. I was gonna say there's like a tampon joke in here somewhere. <laughs> you know, he, he is holding something, so um, I guess technically. Anyway, you said he was holding a. He is a holding staff. an imposing weapon, a giant staff. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Is it real or, or is it I should also say a simile of okay. a weapon or so, staff? So okay. it's part of the statue. Anthony right. did not just give you the the staff of workers right there. <laughs> I was gonna say that'd be kind of weird. <laughs> um. Okay. Um. It's like okay, oh. very weird that that is in here. But also, I do want to know which way the people we were following went. Um. Yeah. So I'm gonna go ahead and make that survival check. If if anyone else wants to explore the room. I want to investigate uh, the statue. Yes. So if y'all, there are murals all over the walls if you want to take a look at them. Okay. Uh, before we look at anything, I am going to turn to uh, our our sweet little friend, uh, Karhita, and ask, uh, did you... Is... Do you know why there might be an Orcus statue in here? This feels very unusual. 
this does feel very unusual. I I don't like this at all. Ileana always said there was something evil about this place, and well, I bet realizing that she's talking to three tieflings, because not to judge anyone who may be descended from Orcus uh, or know him personally, but um, generally we don't like that at the maternity hospital. I mean, to be fair, I don't think that uh, it's very... I don't think demons and fiends are very uh, calming and conducive to uh, people being born, unless you are a demon or a fiend being born. I mean, even then, with some of them, yeah, like Orcus probably is kinda, still not calming. I was gonna say, yeah, Orcus is kind of weird. Orcus is kind of weird too, especially because he is like an undead kind of thing. So I don't know if he'd be. Mm. Someone that even if you're a fiend. Wait, what's his something. what's his deal with undead? He's an undead demon. He's a he's he's like the leader of the undead. Huh. He is uh, Lord of the Undead, Prince of the Undead, Prince of Undeath, the Blood Lord, Lord of Spectres, Master of Vampires, and the Shadow that was. Huh. One of one of those sounds significantly cooler than the other. Why could you have just gone by the shadow that was? Why did you have to give all this undead bullshit in the first part? It's very good. Uh, what we do I, in the shadows that, that was. Is there anything up with the statue? Other than the murals, no. Okay. Shy, what did you get on your roll? Uh, since we're in a mountain, um, that would be a 24. Okay. And you were looking for uh, feet, feet? Uh, there were slippers. And boot prints. And boots. So we really want the slippers. Why did, yes. you, feel but... the, why did you feel the need to clarify feet, feet? What other kind of feet? <gasps> oh, uh, oh, distance feet. Feet. tracks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there, um, there are two different tracks. We want to find the slippers first. If we find the boots, that's fine. But... I have a feeling we want to rescue the slippers. Yes, uh, to the right is the direction of the slippers and the boots. Yep. Okay, to the right sounds good. All right. Uh, and mistaken, uh, the left is is the room with the murals. They're not in this room. Uh, I told you a lie. The DM line. <gasps> Mistake. Well, the gasp. We, That'll we be say a theme we, for this adventure. We could say we took a look down that hallway and there were mur murals down the hallway. There you go. Yeah. Okay. Uh, got anything else down that hallway aside from murals? Uh, no. Would you like to look at the murals in the room or just ignore and continue uh, in the direction of the footprints? Uh, I, for one, would like to know what's going on with these murals because I'm confused as to why a prince of the undeath would be near someplace where life is created. Or life is uh, b brought into the world. Yeah. So um, there is no light in here, but that bothers absolutely none of you. So you are three tieflings with a drow. Oh. So these murals are floor to ceiling. Oh. And they're beautiful, but also horrifying in a way that uh, just kind of gives you tingles at the back of your neck. There's one on each wall, and the first and final panel are identical. One, uh, they feature an impossibly tall woman, like, like taller than me, uh, standing surrounded by a group of women. She has slit eyes with double pupils. Her face is in a snarl. She has high cheekbones and horns, sharp teeth, pointed features. And the other women are kneeling before her, their faces showing absolute reverence. Interesting. Um, in, oh. I was going to ask, does the tall woman look familiar? She looks like some sort of demon. Well, a demonic woman, you would imagine but mm -hmm. she doesn't look familiar 
Okay, interesting. Idara just In kind of is squinting at her for a okay. while. Oh, sorry. Idara is just kind of squinting for a while, like familiar. How dare you be tall? Mother is not a mother. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to imagine Adara's mom is like eight feet tall and she's like, why couldn't you have taller? <laughs> like, I imagine at some point though, Ophelia is just like, wait, I want to see this in color and like drag Shy over just for a moment. <laughs> it's like, it's just like hits a little button, like click, click. <laughs> also, Jess, I like that your cutoff for impossibly tall is taller than me. Taller than me. <laughs> for all of you who don't know, Jess is pretty tall. <laughs> she's pretty tall and any taller than her is impossible. That is not that Shaquille O'Neal. She's like eight feet tall. She's not like she's not like six feet tall. Like, oh, she's full on Shaq height then. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, and she, in fact, someone's just like, "I'm waiting for it. it's your mom," and it's just like, <laughs> "Dun dun dun! It's I'm shy waiting. mom." <gasps> no, I'm waiting for it. It's Lady Dimitrescu. <laughs> Jess is the tallest freestanding structure in the tri-state area. Oh my god! I, I will say I was really sad when they released how tall Lady Dimitrescu was, because I was like, oh my gosh, she, she looks like me. She's built like me. We're the same. And then they're like, she's nine foot eight. And I was like, oh, she's not like me. <laughs> I'm just she's a little bit just taller. Like <laughs> anyway. She's a little taller. Um, um, tragic. So the second mural shows the same tall woman and her head, her esophagus and lungs are separating from her body and oh. floating as are the kneeling women that of the kneeling women their bodies are lying on the ground their head uh, esophagus lungs and eternal organs are floating above well that looks uh unhealthy i like the first mule better <laughs> Is this ringing a bell for Shy? It might be the third panel. Uh, it shows the severed head and guts attacking a village, primarily pregnant women and infants in a village. Oh, I want to know if I've heard of anything like this before, because this sounds important. Yeah, give me... Um... I guess I, it's always weird with like magical beasts. I guess give me a, uh, you know, since this works for Orcus, give me a religion check. Okay. Man, at the first mural, I was hoping maybe there was a relation because she looks badass. Uh, and at subsequent murals, I have changed my mind. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you said religion. So that is a non natural 20. Okay. Yeah, you would recognize these as Penangalans. Apologize, apologies to any melee viewers, or uh, because I I tried to pronounce that right, uh, but I probably failed. So I'll drop that in chat. Uh, there you go. Hmm. Well, that's a. Uh... That's interesting. Uh, like, okay, super bad news. We need to find the kidnapped people. And um, I really hope none of those things have survived being trapped here for however long that door was closed. What's going on? Why do we need to find kidnapped people soon? Do you think the floating head things are here? I... I hope not, but um, considering they evidently can survive without bodies, I'm not terribly hopeful that they have perished in their time sealed in this mountain. Mm. So, so what's the deal with the flying head things? Oh, they attack pregnant women and babies and just generally really bad news. Well, um, uh, yeah, let's good. go. Okay. So you're heading down the, the other corridor that had the footprints? Yes. yes. Although I will point out that uh, they, the beings we're looking for are leaving footprints and not just like, you know, guts trails. So 
It's a good sign. That is good. Yeah, that is yes. a good sign. But they could also be being lured in as food, and we definitely don't want to get there and have them yeah. not be savable. Yeah, we'll have to see. The corridor continues onwards and makes a lot of abrupt turns. Were Shai so not excellent at navigating mountainous terrain, it might be difficult to find your way around here. Also see several collapsed side corridors and tunnels that smell like rot permeating the air coming out near the floor. There's a lot of floor tunnels here with small openings in them. Um, just looking at the, the little tunnels, uh, the openings, uh, does it look like, what does it look like has tunneled through things to create these little holes? It looks like it was built this way. How big is little? Um, the holes are about two inches wide. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, so big enough for an arrow, not big enough for a foot to accidentally go through. Yeah. As you start winding through the corridors, you start hearing the sound of battle and moaning, and you smell a foul stench of undeath. We go faster. Yep, faster. Uh, yeah, plugging my, uh, plugging my nose, going faster. <laughs> yeah, and I'm going to be readying uh, just destroy undead. <laughs> you enter a chamber where you see a human woman in plate mail standing at the center of a gory mess there are three human mercenaries and one ghoul dead on the ground the woman stands there sword in hand fighting off two other ghouls with her great sword uh hi yeah i'm i'm just gonna activate my turn undead because that seems like a really good idea go for it uh and if they are cr1 or lower they are destroyed if they are destroyed if they fail um what's their save again I believe it's wisdom that is a seven and a ten okay so they both fail and what does it look like is you just uh, destroy these two ghouls? <laughs> um, I imagine that Shy's horns just kind of like flare for a moment and then just kind of light emerges from the ghouls' eyes and they just disintegrate. Hop. Nice. <laughs> the woman cool. takes a breath and lowers her sword. She looks up, and as she's about to say thank you, she spots Karhita behind you. It goes, you. You. Karhita, from behind the four of you, she says, Eliana, what did you do with the other midwives? Where are they? It's nothing. But I knew I was on the right track. There's something evil here. There's something foul. And you... And your midwives were hiding it. All of you, uh, I'd like you to give me a perception check, please. Sure. Okay. As to these to the two women start to uh, yell at each other about whose That's fault this is. That's a 23. Okay. 28. I got a seven. <laughs> two kinds of people. Basically, yeah. So, Ophelia, I'll say you're distracted by uh, the middle-aged women in a fight. 
Yeah, uh, oh, no, definitely. <laughs> it's that 20 minutes of all women are queens. If she breathes, she's a thought. And they're just arguing. Shy and Adara, you spot a ghoul scurrying out of a tunnel that is a little bit larger than some of the others, crawling onto the ceiling and removing a piece of stone. Which then leads to the corridor collapsing behind you all. Mm. A burying the ghoul and a loud crash. So you have no way out. Around you, you all hear. <laughs> I, don't oh, like I think that. we're about to meet the puppet master of all this. Yeah. I don't like this. I really don't like this. Hey, assholes, um, focus. We have more important stuff to worry about right now. Wow, it really smells awful in here. Eliana and Kirk, you you're, you're right. Eliana, just great. It'll take days to dig our way out of your hell pit now. Kirk, you just, well, guess the only way onward is through. Yeah, there's probably like a mouth at the other end, right? Like, uh, Adara, are you going to take care of that ghoul, or did it scurry away? It got crushed, right? It got crushed. Oh, it got crushed. Okay. What about uh, the ghoul? Uh, oh, uh, ghoul set off a trap. Generally, they aren't that intelligent, but I'm guessing someone is controlling them. Yeah. Probably the laughing concerning. thing. That's, that's really concerning. Yeah, the laughing is kind of weird. Also, god, the crushed ghoul doesn't help with this one. No. Um, let's go. Okay. Three you of two. you. Huh? What? Who are the three of you? You're not with my order. Yeah, we're an unrelated no. third party. Band, I should say. We're here to help. That's all that's important. Yep, that's that's mainly it, yeah. Alright. We did hear about you, though. We did hear about everything going on. Um, I'm sorry for your loss. Great! So she gossips. Cool, thanks. Um, neat, let's go. She puts her great sword uh, in the sheath and just stalks forward. And Shy at this point just kind of like raises an eyebrow and is just like, well... You can thank her for us not going after you for burning down a... Was it a monastery? It was. It, it was like a hospice. Like a, yeah, yeah, a hospice. hospice. That's the word yeah, for it. But it's like, well, at least we're not coming after you for burning down the hospice because you have your reasons. I mean, variably, they're not like good reasons, but they're still like reasons, I think. Also, and no granted, offense. You, it's like, granted, there is something evil here. But we don't know what's causing it. Yeah. Uh, no offense, lady. I'm going first. You can go second if you want. She just kind of raises her eyebrows at you and goes, Fine, go get yourself killed. <laughs> Shy, Shy just kind of gives a bit of a laugh. And it's just it's like, Ah. Uh, Adara. You're welcome. It's like, it's like, good thing you have one more name to go. Yeah. Do you, uh... <laughs> I'm not worried. Does he want to live to your 40s in this kind of lifestyle? Let the young and fresh go ahead. And she does a little bow. Mm. There is so much going on in here. There is so much animosity. I think you two need to sit down and figure something out that doesn't involve yelling. Um, so... Adara, I think we should probably continue. <laughs> yeah, I'm first, you're second. Uh, one of you okay. two pointing at Shy and Ophelia is third, so that they are not next to each other. <laughs> and we go. Okay. Yes. Guess I'm third then. Okay. Uh, I'm tempted to say that we stick both, b 
both of us between them so that there's less chance for fighting, like the most distance possible between them. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. Karhita just stands up a little straighter and says, no, I will not fight. We have my sisters to discover and I want us all getting out of here alive. There's more important things than fighting with a petty woman who's grieving. I understand that, but you also have to understand that you just said I'm not fighting and then called her a petty woman in one go. So I'm I'm standing between, I'm standing next to my friend Jai. Uh, so you're welcome to follow me. Heading further down into the tunnels, it starts to smell worse. And even though it was dark before, it gets darker and the cobblestones that make up this tunnel are less, should we say, precise. They're, uh, it's bumpier going. You start to see remains of humans that are not ghouls, just, um, bones lying on the ground, occasionally rats skittering away. The rats' gl eyes glow red. And uh, you hear buzzing like flies. Sometimes there's the walls look almost slick. Mm. Yeah, these are all things that I don't like. Yeah, uh, sh shoo shoo, uh, rats, and I'm gonna like make an effort not to step on them, but also like push at them with my feet so that they move and not like weaving between our feet. Eventually, you, uh, about halfway down this tight, damp corridor, you find a rotted desk. And there is a skeleton at it, lying over it. Uh, its hand placed on a moldering book and around the skeleton's neck is a small medallion. Oh. The medallion has a matching symbol to the book. Interesting. Um, well, I'm going to get out my tools and attempt to read this book. Yeah, uh... Hmm. Looks like someone, uh, got bored to death with a book. She put in the joke. Um, does the, does any of this look familiar to you, uh, Shy? Slumped well, over a desk holding that, a book. Uh, is, is that symbol familiar to me? I mean, I knew of the ancient order of paladins that's supposedly extinct. Would that symbol belong to them? Yeah, this is their symbol. And seeing Eliana now, you see that the symbol that she has on her shield is very similar. Hmm. It's not identical, but it's it's rather close. So maybe an offshoot that's still around. Or maybe a portion of her family once belonged to, like, an ancestor, maybe. Let's, uh... But I still really want to know what's in that book. Yeah. Um... Looking at the I... symbol, Eliana's just like, well, that's weird. Hmm. Um, I, I'm going to take out my wand of detect magic and I'm going to, and I'm going to flick my wrist. Uh, is there magic in this room, Jess? There's not other than, you know, yourselves and the magic items that you're wearing. Yeah. Okay. That's interesting. Um, I mean, Shai, if you want to know what's going on, I can always like pick the book up with my mage hand. It's like Shai's just like... Mm, I mean, I think I'd rather have it on a stable surface so that I can try and move these pages without all of them disintegrating, considering how old this book must be. Adara, what are you doing? Uh, this feels incredibly staged, so I am looking at the entire rest of the room to see if this is like, you know, an obvious trap that my um, friends are falling into. And they're just going to get ganked. 
Because you know, Shy just literally cannot resist a book. Yeah, Idara you know. saw a skeleton slumped over a fancy looking book on a desk uh, and was just like, all right, so that's what Shy's doing. Uh, where's where's the booby trap? I was gonna say, I mean, Ophelia's literal personality trait is I was I would risk too much to discover knowledge, so like. <laughs> Yeah, so they both move toward the desk, and she's just like, uh-huh, one desk in the middle of the room with one skeleton and one fancy book. Okay. <laughs> Where's the other shoe? When is it dropping? Okay, <laughs> so we'll say you're on, on watch. Yeah. All right. So, Shy, looking through this book, there, it's a dense journal in... um in ancient dialect and script, but that's not a problem for you. Flipping through it, you gather that this priest was part of, which you'd already figured out, that he was part of the Order of Sacred Light. And he came to this place as part of a large hunting party. Oh no, hat time. Oh, Alexis, why do you do this to me? Um... I have my tablet glove. Tablet glove. I like how I, I still have not removed Take a Short Rest from DW on here. <laughs> because he, they did it in the middle of a boss fight last time. <laughs> uh, so, uh, the Order of the Sacred Light came here in the past, intent on destroying a powerful undead creature and her undead minions. The priest only refers to this creature as the mother. To defeat the mother, they constructed four golden lances imbued with divine power. They knew the mother was a servant of Orcus and was far too powerful to be destroyed by a mere hunting party, even with great warriors and paladins like the priest. And instead, they wanted to prevent her from returning to the Abyss and Orcus's side by trapping her in a physical body using these lances. To ensure she was forgotten forever, they gathered all known records of her and destroyed them. He also details the Penangalan, which you had already figured out, and know that those are daughters of the mother. There are detailed notes in here about them, that they are resistant to turning and grant resistance to any other undead around them. Their entrails infect a person with deadly disease. And most importantly, and, and triple underlined, is that destroying the bodies while the heads are detached limits their regenerative properties and ensures the creature will die at sunrise. Good. All good information. That's interesting. I wonder why this guy was just hanging out at the desk. Well... Some people can't resist writing things down. I'm one of those people. And I am glad that someone in this order was as well. You know, that's fair. Shai will kind of like carefully wrap the book and place it in um, book bag. I was going to say, yeah, you know, if we can, if we can't help it, I hope that one day you're able to leave cool kick-ass notes to someone else that'll help them out in a battle. One can only hope. <laughs> he does, you know. It's a legend amongst the drow. Long ago, about a creature who turned herself against Lolth. She was called the mother. Not really sure what started the conflict. It seemed like very hush hush, but some of the priestesses, they knew. There's been a couple people that have gone against Wolf. It's, uh... She's a little controversial to a lot of people. 
Loth deserves everything she gets. All right, good talk. Do we want to keep uh, trying to find our way out of here? Yeah, I don't know where else we're supposed to go, other than like our friend sitting in here. Um, Shy, do you want do you want this guy's necklace? Um, sure. It's like it's a it's an interesting piece of history, and it will. I'm sure it has a place in the archives. I think it'll help if it's paired with the book. Ah, looting. So you are mercenaries. Eliana says. With kind of a knowing grin. Again, I feel like we're getting into the wrong intricacies here when you're when you literally burn down the hospice. So uh, maybe let's restrain judgment from each other until we get to the end and can figure out what's going on. I mean, mercenary isn't, like, a judgment. It's a fairly accurate description of how we earn money. But, um... Yeah, I, I mean, they're just, she's just saying it like it's a dirty board. She's a merc but mercenary. It, it, it's like, That's what I do. Shy, shy at this point is just like, yeah, but we tend to mercenary a bit differently than other people. Yeah, we're looting this uh, dead body to save babies, so makes you think. Um, I mean, it also could be, I don't know if this amulet's gonna save us at some point later. Anyway, there's no other way out of here, right? This is a dead end? Uh, there is a door ahead of you. Oh. I would like to oh, that's new. check that door out, please. Or, well, a corridor, not there, a door, I would sorry. like to stand by that corridor impatiently. Yeah. <laughs> Just like, yes, we can we can go further now. And and we'll definitely give Adara all of the information on how to kill the things, because really, we all need to know that. <laughs> Detach head. Wait until sunrise. Do they have to be in the sun? And, like, just... Uh, it, the ha if the heads are detached, destroy the bodies. Do they have to be um, in the sun, or does the sun just have to, you know, be present somewhere in this hemisphere? Well, it's like they're automatically destroyed at sunrise if we destroy the bodies. Mm, but okay. they also get have less power if you destroy the bodies. Got it. And keep away from their entrails, because evidently those poison you. Um... Oh, yes. Uh, before we leave, Ophelia is going to do like a little prayer for the priest that was sitting at the desk. Um, again, the whole thing, wherever you believed, and I hope you ended up there, whatever. Uh, and then we can continue forward. All right. Oh, I need to take that off because my back is really quick. Oh. The next corridor. Um, are you sneaking, or are you just trekking through here? I should have asked that a while back. I'm trekking. Yeah, I think uh, at this point, we're probably worried about speed more than stealth, especially since it clearly seems like something knows we're here. Good point. I mean, like, something laughed at us. It's not like we can really sneak at this point. Yeah, something trapped us in here and laughed at us. So, um, we I'm have, more on we a mission- We have already lost any element of surprise. I'm more on a mission to find out or find whoever laugh laughed at us and just, you know, uh, kick them below the belt. Fair. What if they don't have anything below the belt? What if they're just a floating head? Uh, then the head is the belt. Okay. And we'll kick them in the head. Okay. Fair enough. The next corridor is fairly short, and as soon as you approach it, you hear slurping sounds, followed by moans and screams of pain. And we speed up. Yep, hurrying our pace. Fast. Gotta go fast. <laughs> In the center of this corridor, is the body of a gnome woman wearing robes identical to Karhita's, being devoured stomach first by a ghoul. Seeing you, 
the ghoul grabs her and darts down into a tunnel, dragging her behind as she whimpers. Do we have time to like intervene or is this cutscene scripted? Uh, it is to be scripted, but hey, you can intervene. Let's do it. I would like to tackle the ghoul. Yeah, uh, I'll let you get a surprise on the ghoul. Give me an attack for that ghoul. All right. It's me. Uh, 25. You will hit the ghoul. All right. I want to trip the ghoul, I guess, so it can't move. So make me a strength saving throw. Okay. Oh, no. That is a 12. You fail, you fall prone, and you take... As soon as I can read my frickin'... All right. And you take, um, 22 points of damage. And that ghoul goes down. Ah, good. With the woman reaches out to you and puts a bloody handprint on your face before falling still. Shy. God damn it! Is she unconscious or dead? She's dead. Who is this? And Hita comes over to her and she goes. Tita, one of the midwives. Like, I'm trying to remember, uh, do I have, what do I have? I have something. Oh. You're about to resurrect her. Please. I, I have revivify though. So oh. if this happened right in front of me, I can cast revivify right away. That's true. Um, I was also gonna say I could cast Speak with Dead for free. But I was I was just gonna cast Revivify because that I mean I think this is the first time that Shy's had somebody die right in front of her. And I don't think she'd let that stand. Especially not with a spell available to her. Exactly. Go for it. So, uh, she's bringing out a diamond and just kind of, like, placing it on her chest and casting Revivify. Where did you get the diamond? I bought one. When? I yeah, have a like, couple. You I've what? been- I've been away. Also, we go through so many cities. Reminder that y'all got, like, 120,000 gold worth of gemstones that were spell components last week. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah I forgot about there's that. There's that as well, and I, and I think I said, I want some diamonds. Uh, Shy <laughs> empties the full Swarovski crystal store on this dead body. <laughs> no, I think it's just one diamond uh, for Revivify, but um, it is... I thought that was just true. Oh, yeah, diamond worth 300 gold. 300 gold points. Yep. There you go. Yep. Yeah. The gnome gasps and uh, looks you in the eye. Yeah, and tries like bandaging the wounds and is just like, You are not dying in front of me. I refuse. Uh, don't look down, I say to the gnome. And Chai will also pump in a level two cure wounds. Just Thank gotta you. kind of, kind of break that bead. So that's um, fifteen points of healing as well. Do you ever regenerate to give her stomach back? I uh, don't have regenerate. Okay. Well, that's but I but I mean the thing is I can make a medicine check because she I said that she was bandaging the wounds. Yeah, you can also have regenerate tomorrow, right? Like, because you can just prepare different spells. I don't. What level? It might not be too. Generate? It might be too high. Mm. I, th I, think I think it's, it's too, too high. high. It's seventh level. Okay. Yeah, no, yeah. I only have fifth level spell slots right now, Got and it. it's not one of the beads that she has. Um, I have greater restoration, which I don't think. I don't think that's the same. She'll thing. be okay for a day. 
Yeah, just for a day, okay. We just need to, you know, divine mm. intervention harder. <laughs> divine oh. intervention harder, great. But I can make that medicine check to, you know, up the chances here. Yeah, go for it. Oh. So that's a 14. Yeah, she she's not missing her entire stomach. Just pieces of her intestines and her stomach's a little bit torn. She has some internal bleeding. But you have uh, the healing helped her significantly. Yeah. Nice. So I'm just And like... also you kept her from being, you know, actively eaten. Yep. Yep. Well, oh, I'm uh, are you okay? I feel like there's a lot that's just gone on. Karhita steps down and just goes, Sita, can you walk? She goes, I'll, I'll try. Can I, should I get out? And starts to gesture the way that you came in. It's caved in. No, no, baby, you, you wait here. We'll, we'll get you when it, it's safe to get out. Okay. Okay. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna take a nap. Yeah, that's, that sounds like a good idea. Yeah. Uh, if we're gonna leave her, I'm pumping in another level two cure wounds, cause okay. I'm I'm not coming back and having her just be dead. Uh, that's another fifteen points. Also, could uh, one of you leave an alarm, maybe, around the room? Yes, if I will also leave an alarm. Yeah, if she's gonna fall asleep, then you know that'll um alert her at least if something's coming. It's, yeah. Better. Well, I feel better than I, <sighs> I could probably catch up to you if I needed to, if one of those, one of those smelly guys came back. Yeah, uh, please, please be careful. Um, I'm gonna lean over to, uh, to Shy and say, what are we supposed to do about the fact that part of her stomach and her intestines are probably... I... Can keep her going until we can. Oh my God, Alexis! Thank you. <laughs> oh, thank you. Jeez, Louise! Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Shai, Shai is just like I. Let me let me check greater restoration. Um... Um... Say how much I love. Uh, Y'all spending all this time to to save an NPC who's scripted to I die. I know, but <laughs> it's like Ty's just like I refuse. So <laughs> I love she it. Is, she is refusing. So Shy at this point is just like, I'm just going to probably use all of my spell slots to get this person to a larger town and get someone that can heal her. And there's no boss fight. Wait, that's well, fifty dollars. What are you doing? Wait, what? <laughs> that? I thought that was five dollars. Oh. oh my god, Alexis! Alexis! What are you doing? Don't do that. <laughs> oh, Alexis, Alexis, thank, thank you. you. No, but we're not. We're... Right? Oh, five dollars. Okay, good. I thought no, five hundred okay. is five dollars. Oh, Jesus yes. Christ! Yeah, it what is the hell? Me. Alexis, thank you. Alexis. Thank you. Oh my god. That yeah. was very silly of you. I Thank you. I definitely was like, oh, $5. That's nice. Oh my god. <laughs> ah. Okay. All um, right. And now, now we need to stop freaking out. Yeah. And, uh, Focus. Yes. Let, yes. Uh, what are we supposed what are we gonna, What are we going to do about the fact that our stomach is missing? We'll, we'll worry about that later. Um, if she's got some of all the bits, it's fine. Let's go. Yeah. It's just like, maybe I could do some field surgery and we could fix this, but, uh... <laughs> I, I mean, I want to help, but, like, I'm not, uh, uh, I'm not good at this kind of stuff. Well, we can, we can come back and we can get her to someone who, who can, but we need to find the rest of the people and then get out of here. Okay, yeah, that sounds smart. Um, yes, uh, please, please be careful, uh, we'll come back and, uh, and get you from your nap that we're all taken care of. Uh, please be safe. Thank you. 
I, I thought I was a goner for sure. Well, that's what the author intended. <laughs> Shy has been circumventing what authors have intended almost from <laughs> the first episode. She Seriously, it's circumventing what your authors intended. <laughs> We're here to showcase the Uncaged Anthology. Yeah, by it's like breaking have, every adventure. <laughs> have a language they can't read? Uh, Shy reads almost every language. Um, <laughs> It's like, have a curse that uh, shouldn't be lifted until you get the potion? Shy can lift the curse. <laughs> oh, uh... All right, so heading onwards? Yeah. Yes. All right. This room smells metallic, like dried blood. It's nearly 70 feet long, and the floor is stained with old blood. On each side of the room are wooden beds with stirrups and straps. The straps have um, iron cages and iron bands to immobilize the heads and arms. On some of these beds are skeletons. And there are more tunnels in this room as well. Some of them at varying heights in the walls, one or two inches wide, others as big as one to two feet. Hmm. Well, that sounds uh, unsettling. We go disturbing through quickly. Yep. Karhita just stares and looks kind of lost. For a moment for saying i i wonder if he's in a place like this i'm, I'm sorry yes we, we go on who are you talking about i when i still lived in the underdark i had a son uh he was taken the day he was born I searched for him for years, but I never found him. I hold no illusions as to his fate. Most likely he's dead or transformed into some abomination beyond recognition. Still, the mother always hopes. And, uh, well, that's why I left the priesthood and came up to where I could help. So, no other woman goes through what I did. Do, do you want a hug? She smiles a little bit. Just, no, I'm, I'm fine. And you see Eliana actually like kind of pat her on the shoulder for a minute. Says, well, then. Huh. And they both start walking forward together. Hmm. That's, it's a little, it's a little good in terms of growth. They're not arguing, which is nice. Yeah, I'll take, um, you know, less interpersonal conflict. Yeah, that, good, good for everyone. Yeah. Um, yeah, we should keep going then. Yep. And at this point, uh, you walk down some stairs. And the stairs lead to a set of double doors. These doors are pretty large. Hmm. And I think it's time for a five minute break. Or we will approach these doors. <laughs> Let us know what you would do in front of these doors. How or do what you, you think is beyond them. How do you think these doors are trapped? Discuss in chat. <laughs> How do you discuss interpersonal conflict? Back in we'll five. We'll be back in five. Thank you.
to Three Flings, the show with three tieflings. Uh, we are playing Call of the Mother by Anthony Beale, and the <laughs> tiefs uh, are about to maybe go into a boss room. Yeah. Who knows? Also, and thank you again for the, okay. for the bits. And also no, the people who are following and stuff. Thank you as well. But Alexis especially, thank you. Thank Thanks for you. sticking around with us, everybody. Thanks for dealing with this clownery. <laughs> our, our buffoonery. Yes. So, what y'all doing? Uh, checking out the door to see if it's trapped and if so, how. Yes. I will let the other two figure out if it's got, you know, important iconography on it. I'm just focused on, will it explode when we open it? Sure, Look, looking at the door, seeing if there's anything unusual about it, other than size. It looks very old. Hmm. Hmm, interesting. Um, it's alright. Gonna... Roll me a perception check. <laughs> oh, what were you about to do? Uh, I was gonna okay. say, I wanted to take out my wand of detect magic. Just flick it while Adara's looking at the door. And that does 30 feet, yeah? Um, hang on. I think it's 30 feet. I feel like I think it is too, but I'm not fully sure. So I'm gonna say no. Uh, it is 30 feet in a sphere, yes. Yeah. No magic. No, okay. So, Jess. Within 30 feet. Guess what I got on my perception check? 800. 32. Close. <laughs> Close. <laughs> Basically the same. So, you don't see any traps on this door, but you do hear someone say, you don't see any traps on this door. You sense that you're being watched by a dozen people that are much bigger than you in a place far, far away that you can't even fathom through magical or mechanical means that are beyond your ken. Hmm. Adara breaks the fourth wall, climbs out of the screen, and just starts punching people. <laughs> I imagine Adara tried to describe this feeling to Shy. <laughs> you ever just feel like you're being watched uh, from, like, another plane? <laughs> I mean, that that does sometimes feel like what religion feels Not, like, I can and imagine. Also, <laughs> somebody is, like, describing everything you do. Talking to a cleric and a warlock, and they're like, yes. It, it's like, <laughs> Shai's just like, have you been talking to Brooks? <laughs> Not new pitch. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm looking at the chat. <laughs> Uh, and Dara punches Alexis directly in the face. New Patreon reward. <laughs> Thank you for New fifty dollars. Get absolutely blended. Oh my god. Um, yeah. Anyway, uh, this door seems safe, barring you know the general situation that we're in. The door isn't any more part particularly dangerous. Well, then open it. All right. Uh, everyone, good. I pop open the door without waiting for a response. <laughs> the door yeah, is sure. locked. Oh, it's locked? I pop open the lock. It is not locked. It is not, it is locked. not locked. I pop open the door. There is a large square chamber with ceilings about 50 feet high and um, 80 feet around. There are massive Stones hanging from the ceiling from rusty chain. Four small alcoves surrounding the room. And in one of the al in two of the alcoves, one on each side, are two women in robes kneeling in silence. Centered on the back wall on a massive stone throne, vaulted on a platform, are the mummified remains of a woman, about 10 feet tall, except her head is sitting in her lap. 
Four golden lances pierce through her body and the throne itself. To the right of the platform is a door. Uh, I'm gonna look over at Shy and go, there's some kind of church thing that, um, that happens? Like, I feel like there, there, there's something going on here with the, with the, what is it? Did you say it was? The, the thing with the head? You said what it was, Shy. I can't remember what it's called. Um, yes, but I think this person in particular is, is the mother that people have been talking about. And, um, because remember that bit about the lances and how they were, I believe it said grounding her in her physical form in order uh, to kill her, but evidently she's, she might be less dead than we were hoping and more just trapped. So, so what do you- I'm gonna look over yeah. the door too and be like, so what do we do? Have you entered the room yet? Or are you still standing in the doorway? Um, I think probably stopped in the doorway because there are like people in here, or at least people-shaped things. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. yes. so Idara's response to, so what do we do, is, uh, first step, I think we figure out what those two are up to. Yes. Because the kneeling people might be trying something that we don't want them to. And they might also be the, um, you know, detachable undead, like in the second carving. So again, what are we supposed to do about this? Because we have a person in the other room without part of a stomach. We have a mother sitting here with a bunch of lances. We seem to have a very clear way to go past these people, but I'm more concerned about what's going to happen once we step foot in this room. Uh, yeah, I, I don't want to leave those kneeling people there. Yeah, while we go past. I, I, don't, I don't like that. I think the answer to what we do is we take out their bodies first and then we take off their heads. What if... Hearing okay. this, Karhita goes, looks, uh, kind of moves o to see over Ajara's shoulder, because Ajara is tall. She goes, that's... That... That's Brienne and, and Ventura. What what are they doing? You're, you want to cut off their heads? Those, those women work with me. I I was also gonna, um, yeah, that's what I was gonna say. I was gonna say, what if they're not whatever the things are that Shai said? Only one way to find out, I say, stepping into the room. Yeah. Well, we need to make sure that they're not doing something stupid well, like trying to revive this mother person. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Uh, we don't get paid enough for this. So you've come to me at last. Wait. Nyari, scourge of new life, mother of the headless maidens, and the exalted priestess of Orcus. <laughs> ah. Can you repeat your name again? I don't usually like repeating myself, but just... Nyari. Interesting. Scourge of new life. All right. No, yeah, I got that. It was mostly the name name part. Thanks. Uh, keep going. To the other two, I'm going to say. It was just like, wait, let me write this down. I don't need to write it down. It's already written down on my scimitar. Oh, is this a, is this a thing? Is this going to be a thing? Well, Adara, it's your last name. Yeah. So, so this, so this is going to be a thing. Yeah, I can't die until yep. she does. Okay. Uh, well, I guess that settles what we're gonna do now. Sorry, keep going. I suppose I should thank two of you for freeing me and allowing me to return home. And uh, Karhita and Elena just go like, what? What are you talking about? Oh... You'll see. Yeah, uh, I don't like the sound of that. Are the two kneeling women doing anything? Nope, not moving. Is don't the mummy? Like I notice. Is the mummy moving? No, but the sound is coming from the mummy's head. Okay, neat. Um, 
the fact that those two are not reacting makes me think that they are uh, gone already or under some sort of spell. So heads up, but uh Yeah, when you when you say they're in robes, do they have like hoods up kneeling, that sort of thing? The same thing that Karhita's wearing. Like the smocks. Okay. Okay. Um yeah, I'm gonna lean over and say, I don't really like this. Nope. So. But we're gonna have to go in and figure out what's going on. Yep, feels like a trap, oh. but also only way in is forward, so... You don't even know where you are, do you? We're under a mountain? The hell kind no. of question I mean, is that? We, right we, beneath Mother's Hope. Once the lances pierced my body... The magic began to weaken. Why they built Mother's Hope directly above this chamber. Every time a child was born, the release of divine energy renewed the magic, but fortunately, Eliana, you frightened everyone away. Oh, fuck. Hmm. And Nyak Karhita, you hated the drow so much. I'd all given up. I'd gone to sleep. But your hatred of Loth awakened me from millennia of dormancy. Eliana, you sensed me. And when you burnt the building... You shattered my bonds. <laughs> and the rest of you, well... What brings you to Niari's den? Oh, death sends us. He said hi. Uh, and you should die now. Yeah, we've, we've oh, come to collect. Yes. Kel Kel for, um, yes. Well, I'll be honest, I was really just stalling for sundown. And now, the doors in the chamber lock behind you with an audible click. Then oh. both of the giant stones in the corners descend, their chains throwing clouds of rust and raising thick metal doors over each of the alcoves. You can see a one-inch slit in the center of each door. I'd prefer that you all die here. Anonymity has its advantages. And if you live, well, then my name will be whispered in hushed tones and in birthing beds once again. Why do you <laughs> monologue so much? You hear the sound of claws on stone mixed with horrific street screams. Coming from wet, tearing sounds emerging from the alcove. Following the sound of slickness and the scent of fresh blood, the disembodied heads of Brienne and Ventra squeeze through the tiny gaps in the doors as ghouls start running in from the tunnels. Let's roll for initiative, shall we? Let's. Can we not do it like this? <laughs> Alexis, why? Why do you have to say this stuff in chat? Do me a favor. <laughs> uh... Earl two thirteens, which seems auspicious. Um, that's a seventeen uh, in initiative. Okay. Uh, I rolled and then misplaced my dice. <laughs> <laughs> that means you get a zero. Okay. Uh. Oh, okay, I don't have to roll for the ghouls. Cool. <laughs> ghouls come in. Roll on roll 20. Mm. Oh, no, wait, I do roll for the first ones. Okay. I'll roll 
I, I hate the energy we have created in the studio tonight. <laughs> uh, okay, what did everybody else get? I got a 13. Auspicious. Ophelia, what about you? I got a 15. Ooh. Okay. And and you've got some friends. Uh. Oh, oh, you have a credit, all right? Yee! Ah, uh, yes! Yes! Uh. Also, for all of you that are not in our Discord server, I just put up an image uh, and added Alexis that said, Think before you speak. T, is it true? H, is it helpful? I, is it inspiring? N, <laughs> is it necessary? K, is it kind? Uh. Eliana. I want to crit the mummy lord. Uh, y'all, y'all make me so incredibly thankful to be able to do this and make, make some sort of connection with all of you. But at the same time, sometimes I look at some of the stuff that y'all say and I go, wow, this is what we've cultivated. We love and appreciate you. This is us reaping what we've sown. <laughs> we love and appreciate you, but also, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, basically. Pangolins are up first. Right, right. The pangolins. Every time you say that, I think of pangolins, the little like uh, yeah, armadillo yeah. things. It's just like these these things are not that cute. <laughs> like penguins, the penguins. Oh, oh no. pangolins. I think of that uh, video of Benedict Cumberbatch where he's trying to do it. He's like penguins, the penguins. <laughs> but I mean, I mean like the pangolins with with the. Yeah, like, I think yeah. that's what I was thinking of. The little the little guys that look like they're constantly anxious. Oh. Okay. Either um, one would be an improvement. They're gonna go for the heavily armored people, so they're it's gonna like, go it, for it would be an improvement, armor. except we would have to kill them, so technically not an improvement. Yeah, I don't like that. Uh, no. I will say, if they're going for literally heavily armored people, I'm wearing studded leather, um, but I do look very heavily armed, so I do still think they should go for me. Yeah, so that would be Sh uh, you and um, Eliana. And so Shy looks pretty heavily armored as well with the shield and all. Would you rather they went for you than Eliana? Mm, no. Yeah, I think okay. I Okay, cool. Uh, so, bad news, Adara. It got a crit attack with its tongue, but it got a nat one with its guts. That probably evens out. So. Something, you know? I'm ready to get Give tongued. Give me a constitution saving throw as you get licked. Ew. Fortunately, I'm a fighter. I'm great at these. Is this a poison-related thing? Twelve. Um, no. All right. I don't know what twelve means, but I'm gonna roll my. Uh, ironically, I rolled a twelve, so twenty-two. Okay. Um. Oh, twelve was me talking to myself. Okay. Um. Okay, so you succeed, and so you're taking eight, nine, ten. Not the critical sure. Sixteen piercing damage plus. Why do I keep sixteen? Uh, nope, half eight necrotic damage. Eight necrotic. I don't like that combats and... keep opening with a crit on Adara. Yeah, I feel like I'm getting warped. Shy, uh, you are going to get a tongue attack because a uh, twenty-two will hit you. Yes, it will. Um, but a a, a nine. 18 will not, correct? 18 is my armor class, so technically, yes. So you are going to get tongue and gutted. Yep. Okay. Can we use a different verb? Uh, <laughs> no. I hate the energy we have created in this studio tonight. Yeah, constitution saving throw. Give me two of them in a row, actually, please. Sorry two. about your good and creepy okay. adventure, Anthony. <laughs> okay. Constitution, that's a... 17 and ooh, uh, 21. Wait, you succeeded on both, which is good for you. Very good. Uh, good for us, everybody. Good for us. 
So that was um, 10 piercing damage plus 16 uh, from the tongue attack. And then 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 acid damage from the gut. Ew. <laughs> you said, oh, yeah. uh, minus 16, 11? Uh, yes. Hey, 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 Zan, Zan, Hellish Rebuke. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> good, good idea. Oh, yeah, is this a melee rebuke. attack? Uh, yeah. Oh, it's only if I get missed. Never mind. Wait, I did get missed. You did. You did. I'm gonna repost. I'm gonna hellishly rebuke with my axe. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's a rebuke of some sort. <laughs> I can't wait for all these clips to go up next week and people on our Twitter are gonna be like, what happened? We what don't happened know. to this adventure with serious content warnings that it devolved into this? Uh, Zan, do you want to resolve yours first? Oh, okay. Uh, maybe you should resolve yours first because I'm trying to remember if it was dexterity saving throw. Yes, right. dexterity saving uh, throw. Then that is a um, 18 to hit. That will hit. All right. Please take uh, 19 points of damage uh. as I return fire. And then try. Uh, make a dexterity saving throw. Okay, that is a twenty, dirty twenty. So you save um, half as much damage. So that's a uh, half of seventeen. Half of uh, seventeen. Eight. eight. Yeah. Wrong eight fire seven. damage. Eight fire damage. Cool. Um, all right, so then, um, the ghouls are going to, uh, come out. Why did they roll so well? That's really funny. Sorry. <laughs> it's not that funny, actually, Jess. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> you just think it's funny because they're going to hurt us. <laughs> they shouldn't have rolled that well. Um, the pain I feel is immeasurable. <laughs> oh, you know what? They don't enter yet. They, uh, I don't know. It says that they enter in the fourth round, the uh, third round of combat. Ghouls aren't here yet. Good, good. It does say Something that another wave. To. Oh no, that's the second wave that's supposed to enter during the third round. I don't like where this is going. I don't either. I'm gonna be honest. Okay, I'll have these ghouls come in next round. Okay. All right. Good talk. Okay. Said, something to look forward to. Yay. Yeah, you'll have ghouls next time. Right now, you just hear them. So at this point, Car uh, Eliana, not yet. Uh, Carhita is going to run up you know eliana i confused myself with their names um eliana is going to run up in between all of you and just say stand strong and she is using leadership oh and interesting all of you can add a d4 to whenever you make an attack roll or saving throw. Aww. Ooh, I like that. Oh, uh, like once? I'm gonna have to be reminded of that because I'm gonna forget. Yep. Uh, so once, I'm assuming, or is it like- for, It lasts for one minute. Uh, oh. We can only do it one at a time. So we each get one d4 we can add to one d d20 roll? Yep. Okay. And then it's Adara's turn. All right. Um, so there's two of the um, Guts vampires in the room. Yep. And that's currently it, other than the mummy woman? Uh, yep, there is a mummy woman. What's the mummy woman doing? Sitting there. All right. Well, these things um, hurt. So I'm going to help with one of these before I make my way over there. 
Um, okay. So the one that attacked me, I'm attacking back several times. For it. Uh, nice. I'm going to... Uh, well, does a 15 hit? No. That's fair. But my next attack is a 23 to hit. That'll hit. Excellent. Please take um, 16 points of magic slashing damage. Okay, now it's time for just get out the calculatrice. <laughs> the calculatrice. There you go. All right. Now what? I, my next attack happens. Go for it. Um, that is a 29 to hit. That'll hit. So Ooh. please take another 16 points of damage. Uh. And how's this one looking? Is it like injured at all yet? Uh, scratched. Scratched? Okay. Um, okay. I want to sit on my nat 20 for the mummy, but instead I'm going to use it to hopefully, or I guess it's my nat 20, I can do what I want. I want to bite off this thing's tongue. Uh, just as it as it goes for another freaking tongue attack, I just grab it with my te teeth and tear. Oh good, I'm glad we got raided during that. Hey, <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Um, <laughs> it's like, uh, um, Adara just wants a tongue sandwich right now, so. Ew. Um, Yep. I'm very uncomfortable with the energy we have created in the studio tonight. <laughs> so anyway, I take I take the ghoul vampire, uh, the guts vampire's teeth or tongue as it, uh, you know, reaches out to lick me again. I grab it between my teeth, and I would like to rip it off with my nat twenty. Thank you. Um, Yo, what's your damage for that nat twenty? Uh, that is should probably add a superiority die to this. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna do that. Uh, I'm gonna say this is a make me a wisdom save. Okay. <laughs> that is a 17. Um, all right. So that is going to be um, 42 points of damage. Um, mm. And okay. with a 17, you are not frightened of me, but you did deeply consider it for a moment. Okay. Uh, and that's my turn. Cool. It's going to use one of its legendary actions to uh, hit you with its guts. And that is going to be a 25 to hit. Uh, a 25 will hit. Um, you did take off its tongue, so well done there. Uh huh. Uh, give me a con save, please. Sure. I'm a fighter. I'm great at these. Um, well, that's a 17. That's good. All right. You have eaten it. So uh, you take eight acid damage. I take four because I resist acid damage. Heck yay. Yay. So um, I kind of don't want to ask this question, but what does it taste like? Ooh. Yeah. What does it taste like? Um, uh, it's undead, you said? Mm-hmm. I, I, it tastes like old meat, probably. Like, y you beef know, jerky. it's beef, but it's gray, and you really shouldn't. Um, like boiled meat? Like boiled steak? Cold boiled steak. But yeah, that's old. what I it, it does not taste correct. We do not chew. <laughs> we spit. Yes. Um, I'll say that other one is going to... Uh, got attack shy. You know, and fair. And a 14 will not hit you. So No, it will not. <laughs> you don't get hit. And then it is Ophelia's turn. Okay. Um, I have to check to see if this thing uh, is a... Sh Adar should take the gourmet feet. <laughs> I just saw that too, and I was like, oh, that's, that's, that's gooey. I love oh, that. No. Um, it feels like bullying Adara. <laughs> Um, okay, I can do this. Yes. Okay, so as my action, I am going to take out um, my uh, staff. I'm going to spin it, uh, yell the, the word, and throw a, uh, my staff on the ground so it becomes a giant constrictor snake, because of course I do. Um, let me snakes. Roll, <laughs> let me roll the, the DC for this. Okay, my snake got a three. 
uh, for initiative. It got a critical failure plus two, which is fine. Um, and then as a uh, bonus action, I am going to cast Tasha's Otherworldly Guise. I, and I am going to do that of the lower planes, so I am immune to being poisoned and fire. Um, and then I am going to uh, use part of my movement to just fly up off the ground a little bit. So I am above the snake, and that is going to be my, my turn. All right, I like it. And at that point, uh, one, the other Penangolin is going to make a tongue attack against Shy. Fair enough. And uh, an 18 hits you? Yes, that give is. Another, give me another con save, please. I rolled very badly. Uh, it's a 14. Okay. You have failed. Ugh. That was pretty so bad. That is five piercing damage plus five necrotic damage. And in Abyssal, um, the Penangolin just goes delicious and you see her cheeks glow as she is healed Man. from tasting you this is a wendy's ew. please ew and uh now it is a uh, shine's turn there are so many levels of that that i absolutely do not like so going to use my action to cast turn undead okay uh just just a quick question. Didn't we also establish that they're immune to being turned? No, they aren't immune. They have resistance. Mm -hmm. Ah, yes. Okay. So, I mean, it's possible that more of them will not be turned, but, you know, it's worth a shot. Mm -hmm. It is better than nothing, yes. And that's a con thing, right? Uh, it's wisdom. Wisdom. Okay. So that is a 19... For one of them. 19 succeeds. And... Oh, good thing they're resistant. That was a nat one on my dinosaur dice. Ugh. And... Come on, dinosaur dice! <laughs> and an 18 <laughs> on the other one. No! And the 18 meets my AC. Well... Does anything... No, nothing happens if they succeed. All right, in that case, I'm going to be casting Spiritual Weapon at okay. level four. Oh? Oh, yes. So I'm adding, <laughs> I'm adding D8 to this and Dang. will be hitting one of the heads upside the head. <laughs> Especially the hit it upside? I, well, I guess I could tangle it in the entrails, but... Um, just want to hit this thing upside the head because it is being really gross and I do not appreciate it tasting me. Okay, so that is a non-natural 20 to hit. Which I assume hits. Jess said yes, but the the sound didn't travel through the internet. Okay, all right. Oh, yes, that hits. Mm -hmm. It's like, am I muted somehow? No. no. Okay, so that is... Data plus that, plus that. So that's... Um, 20 points of force damage. That's second, third, fourth. Yes, 20 points of force damage. Cool. Anything else? Can I use my action and bonus? 
I I use my I I use my free action to just kind of like raise my shield a little bit higher. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> actually, um, Mysterious is going to come out and flank with Adara. Good, good friend, good friend, good friend, good friend. Good. All right, and then Karkita. Just goes. I hear ghouls. I'm. I'll hold them off. They can't hurt me. I'm. I'm an elf. <laughs> Is that how that works? I love that confidence. Keep it up. Good, good to know. <laughs> no serious question. Is that how that works? Inara says as she like runs off. <laughs> sort of. <laughs> and Chai's just really wishing she saved that channel divinity, but you know, uh was not going to stand something liking her, so... <laughs> no, yeah, good call. Yeah, so yep, Karkita's gonna hold her action, and it is the snake's turn! Yay, it's snake's turn. Okay. Um, so, immediately, uh, who's the closest enemy to us at the current moment? There are two floating penangolins. One by Adara, and one by Shy. Oh, and Kay, it's legendary action time. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'll say one moves right over by you. Now you have one. The one with okay. no tongue has moved over to you. It does not provoke opportunity attacks. Oh, oh tragic. Okay. And I'll say one leaves shy because it didn't like the attempt to turn it and is going to go in front of Adara. So Adara, you have one again. Okay. 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 So Snake immediately, uh, seeing one get close to me, is going to try to constrict one of them. Okay. Um, how cl how far off the ground are they floating? Wait, no, it doesn't matter. Five feet, no, no, it'll hit it because even if it's not like the head, it'll get the entrails. Okay, like not that big a deal. Does a fourteen hit? Uh, fourteen does not hit. Okay. Um, so I don't think there's the snake. I don't think it's bonus action, so that's all the snake can do at the current moment, unfortunately. Okay. And it is Panangolin's turn, and. Penangolin is going to uh, try and go for Ophelia. Okay. Ophelia's right there. How about that? Oh, I don't think that's going to hit at all with that one. Because that was an 11. I, I don't think an 11 hits you. No, it does not. And there's a nat 1. That sure won't hit you either. I'm gonna nice. say I'm gonna say she's a little bit confused, and I'm gonna have her miss one of her legendary actions. Yay! And the other one's gonna try and go for Dara. Mm -hmm. That's a nat twenty. Boo! <laughs> <laughs> nat twenty with the tug, nineteen with the gut. All right. Nineteen does not hit you, correct? Uh, no, it does not. Okay. Uh, so. Give me a con save. All right. Uh, 26, get fucked. <laughs> she does not reheal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, she does, just less. 12 plus 5, 17 piercing damage. All right. Plus 6 Tris necrotic damage. Trisket, come knock your mom's dice. Off the oh. table and curse them. Just get save us. Um, all right. Good to know. Trisket. Oh, you got a hey, one. Yay. You got a critical failure here. Good. Uh, no. Oh. Yay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, I really could be shitty and have uh, give one of those critical failures to a ghoul. We're about to come out now, but I won't no. do that. <laughs> you have nat 20 me twice and counting. Oh. The, the ghouls were different. This is equity. Yeah. So I'm going to have these ghouls come out and claw at uh, your drow girl right now. And Aww. one of them is going to miss and then her held action is going to go off. Yeah. And she's gonna get to sneak attack and assassinate. Ooh. That is not the character class I would have expected. That's not at all what I expected either. I was like, wow. So she's just gonna start taking out some ghouls. <laughs> she really said, I'm a healer, but. <laughs> yep. So 
Oh, that's amazing. Three. You know, I guess sometimes death is the ultimate form of healing. Yeah. Honestly. And that one. An alarming thing to hear your healer say. Oh, yeah. She only hits twice. So that one is still up. Alarming to the call the healers. Goals. Yeah, it's um, <laughs> bold of you to say Aisha is a healer. Out of the three of us. <laughs> and 15 uh, is her armor class. So that is going to be 12, 13, 14. And none of them hit her. They just kind of claw at her. Ah. Uh, and then it is... um. The knight's turn. She's still doing some leadership, but now it just keeps going on. So y'all can oh, add that. Oh damn! I forgot about the leadership. Oh, oh thanks. Okay. <laughs> it's still there. <laughs> <laughs> and now she's gonna make a great sword attack on one of those penangulans. In fact, she's gonna do it twice, but only one of them is gonna hit. We'll take it. She probably should go for the ghoul because she does not have a magic sword. <laughs> but that's okay. It just does half damage. But she's still here and fighting yeah. at your side. <laughs> Contributing. <laughs> we'll take Seven, it. Eight, nine, ten. So five damage uh, is what she does. And she gives you some more leadership. So this is now by Ophelia. And this is now by Adara. And now it's um it's uh the one a, with a tongue is going to make a tongue attack at Adara. I like this. It, it just hit me. Now. Didn't it? <laughs> hey, it has legendary actions. How about that? Oh, okay. <laughs> uh so that is going to hit you. Cause that's a twenty three. Yeah. Give me another hits. con saving throw. My goodness. Um, 28. You are good. So that's... Do you just want the total damage? Yeah. You don't care between piercing and necrotic? Uh, no. Okay. I care if it's acid. Okay. Uh, so that is going to be 15 total damage. All right. And she's going to reheal. Four, seven. Oh, I forgot. They had their turn. They feel better now. That sucks. And uh, the other one is going to do a gut attack on Ophelia. Oh, and, and super miss. Nice. Adara, it's your turn. All right. So, um, one of them, the one by Ophelia looks significantly more beat up, right? Or, okay. The one in front of you looks totally fine now. Hmm. All right. Um, then I'm going to trust that the other two can handle that one. And I'm going to start attacking this one. Uh, and I'm going to open with a... No. I'm going to I'm gonna just regular attack. Um, so, first attack is going to be a... <laughs> many. 29 to hit. Hit. So please take um, 13 points of magic uh, slashing damage. Next attack mm -hmm. is a two on the die, so I don't think a 13 is going to hit. No. So we're going to switch our D20. Even when you roll a two, you've got a 14. <laughs> Look, <laughs> I'm good at one thing. Uh, I can't read this die. Um, that is a 27 to hit. That'll hit. So please take another uh, 15 points of damage. I think that was all my major attacks. So now I'm going to bonus action bite. Uh, and we're going to see what we roll. Um, does an 18 hit? It does. All right. Uh, I'm going to hungry jaw. The first time this has ever come up uh, over the course of the campaign, my third, tell us what this is. my third level thing that I got for being a tiefling um, I get the lizard folk hungry jaw ability, which means uh, I bite her and I heal. Um, Ooh, so said no to you. yeah, so uh, I see her do this to shy, and she 
creepily goes mm, delicious in Abyssal. Uh, so I deal nine points of damage to her. Um, I gain four temp and I uh, spit the mouthful of vampire that I got out on the ground and say, in Abyssal, you taste like shit. And that's my turn. This is, this is why you wash your meat before cooking, <laughs> folks. <gasps> I like it. And now I'm four healthier. <laughs> this is great. I love that. Ophelia, you're up. Yeah, okay. Um, so, uh, check. There we go. Oh, is it? Okay, thank you, everybody. I am. Um, we are slowly. Slowly vibing. Okay, I have to look at what this does. Okay, so one of the things I would like to do is I am going to, while my uh, while I am floating in the air at nearly eye level with this uh, this penangalon that's in front of me, mm -hmm. I am going to attack with the uh, Sword King of Betrayal. Because I barely use this thing. So I am going to reach out of my waist, pull it out, and, and immediately uh, go to try to hit her. Uh, so... That's a that's a crit plus ten, so that's a thirty. Shit. Yes. Okay. Uh okay. Um so what is it? Because I'm just trying to read how I'm gonna do damage for this because it says um all your weapon attacks are magical and when you use a weapon attack you can use your spellcasting modifier instead of strength and dexterity for the attack and damage roll. So um so I'm just trying to think. So I think that would just be, so I got a plus 10, because that's a plus 10 to hit, because that's my spellcasting modifier. I don't know what my modifier is for damage. Probably five. I think so, because I think it's my charisma. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, okay, we'll do the damage first. We'll do the max damage first. So that's 13. And then... Oh, it was a 30 to hit. Sorry, I thought you said it was a... <laughs> my brain just, like, wrote down 30 damage. <laughs> So I was no, like, yeah, that sounds no, it's a thirty to hit. I got a, I got okay. a critical plus um, plus a plus ten because that's my attack bonus. Okay, so it's a thirteen, and then uh, Mel in chat also oh. says to add your charisma. Oh, so it's a plus ten too. Mm -hmm. Oh wait, no, 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 no it is it's just it's, a plus five. Okay, so plus five. Your charisma yeah, modifier. No. Yeah, my charisma is plus five. Okay, so that's thirteen. It's about to be like, how do you have a thirty in charisma? <laughs> We'll make it one day. Uh, so you're taking six. Uh, you're taking nineteen points of uh, magical piercing damage. Nice. Um, and then I'm gonna try to hit it again because I can do that with Tasha's otherworldly guys. Yay! Uh, which I God, I'm so thankful for this for this spell. It's so helpful. Okay, so I'm gonna use the same thing and I'm going to slash backwards at it. That's another critical. <laughs> So it's another 30. And actually, um, Mistorius is going to help you out, so add a d6 to that. I forgot. I don't know if it... That's a 36. Nice. I have six. Thank I was you, Mistorius. <laughs> okay. Wait, the d6 is oh. what you add to the damage, right? Not to hit? Or... Is it to hit damage. or is it the damage? Yeah. Damage. Oh, okay, so it's still a 30, but I'll roll my damage. Hang on a sec. So I, I rolled like... a 6 on that, so thank you, Mistorius. I think a um, six to your nat twenty would be a little silly. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's he's helping. He's, he's just like spitting a little acid ball, like as you attack something. So yeah. it's like lemon juice in a cut, except worse. So then you're taking twenty seven points of uh, piercing damage. Does that include the six from Astorius, or is that yes, extra? That's okay. what. That's what the six. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Sword of Betrayal, and thank you, Tasha's other wealthy guys, for letting me do okay. a plus ten to attack. Uh, uh, anything else, Ophelia? Uh, let me check. I don't think there's anything else I can do because I'm hold. I'm concentrating on Tasha's other wealthy guys, so I think that is it at the moment. So she's going to smack at you with her guts. Okay, and have that's fun. That's a dirty 20. Okay, my AC is a 19, unfortunately, so you do beat it. Give me a con saving throw, please. Okay. Uh, 
I have to check something. Um, okay. Uh, do we still get the the what is it? The guidance? So that's a D four for leadership or whatever. Uh, you can add two um, attack rolls or saving throws. So that's a twenty one. Okay, cool. I hold a this seventeen is... plus three plus one. <laughs> Good. So you are taking eight acid damage. So this is acid, not poison. Okay. Mm -hmm. But uh, the bad thing doesn't happen. Which is what? What is the bad thing? The bad thing well, is the healing thing that they did when they uh, did. Oh, no, no, no. That's from the tongue attack. The gut thing oh. is a different thing. Yeah, we, right. we, got the told, thing. we got told the, the gut, gut thing, thing is the poison. Like, the, we got told the gut thing, like, kills you. Oh, yes. Um. So I'm also going to hellish rebuke in response to that. So now you have to make me a dexterity saving throw. So that is, uh, she's going to use one of her legendary resistances for Wait, that. Have, Jess, have you used your critical failure yet? Oh, I haven't. You know what? I'm going to, she crit fails. Okay. <laughs> I just wanted to ask because I'm like, mm, Thank I you, because I forgot. So. Yep, yep. I don't think so. That's a perfect time for the crit fail. There we go. Okay. Um, so how are we doing crit fails for damage? Uh, just give me all of the damage. Act like it's a crit success for you. Okay, so that's 30... You're taking 44 points of fire damage. Instantaneously. Oh and uh, she goes up in flames. Yay! So, so now I'm getting 18 temporary hit points. <laughs> oh, thank you. And you hear Niari go, that, that wasn't supposed to happen. <laughs> well, this other one, take them out! There's a lot of things in life that aren't supposed to happen, but you didn't plan for the three flames, so... Huh. Shy, what's up? Okay, so what is the situation looking like right now? We have... How many of the floating heads? One. Just one. And there are two ghouls that are standing by uh, your drow friend. And then you have a knight friend who is standing by uh, Adara, has failed to hit the... Well, she hit once. She yeah. hit a little bit on the other Penangalon. Oh, I forgot, too, because I got hit. I now have to do my constitution, my constitution save for me doing concentration. Hang on! I'm going to scream at myself if I don't do that. Uh, I forget what the rule is for that. It's... A for your DC... Uh, plus the damage is the damage that you took. Well, so it's either 10 or it's half the damage you took, whichever one's higher. Yeah. Uh, so... I forgot how much it's damage eight, you took. It's 8, so okay. it's 10. It's 10 for me. I got a 15, so I'm fine, and I have advantage anyway, so yeah, that would have been a 15%. So I'm oh. fine. I remembered, Alexis! I remembered for you! I specifically took a <laughs> so I could remember! I did it for you! <laughs> well... I'm going to take my spiritual weapon and whack the head upside the head. Okay. Go for it. Yes. So, that will be a 22 to hit. Well, hit. So that's 17 points of force damage. Uh. And can you know what? Can I see where this head's body is? You know that the head's bodies were in those alcoves that had the steel doors shut in front of them. They're held but in place by the rusty chains. Oh, yeah. And they're you, one inch slits in the door. That's what they floated in through. Shy has it's the brain It's a one cell. inch slit. It's a one inch slit. Mm -hmm. Can I see the body at all? If you go over to the door, yeah. <laughs> and the head's over by Adara, Adara yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm going to see if I could see that body. Sure can. And cast Banishment. Okay. So yeah. 
I don't so, know if they have a different check, but they have to make the body has to make a charisma saving throw. Uh, the body is lies and uh, is incapacitated. I, so, I misheard that and I heard incapacitated and I heard what about me? <laughs> uh, I'm assuming it's going to fail automatically, honestly, because uh, it, uh, the charisma saving throw. No, I'm saying like the body. Oh, yeah, the body. Fail. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. That's what I was <laughs> hoping for. Charisma is stored in the brain and a headless body has none. Yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there has to be a reason that they're protecting the bodies, and it's yep, because they're yep. vulnerable. I mean, yeah, we did decide to that destroying the bodies destroys the thing by sunrise. Yeah, so. and then immediately forgot the second combat started. Shy has the brain cell. <laughs> yep. Again, okay. Chris was stored in the brain, and Shy's the only one with him tonight. <laughs> you are banishing the body, but not destroying the body. No, but I have to assume that in order for it to get the advantages that it does, it has to be on the same plane of existence, which it won't anymore. Sure is an assumption. So I'm going for that. Okay. So the body pops into a pocket dimension. <laughs> That's amazing. And anything else shy? Ah, uh, just gonna kind of uh, back into a fairly defended quarter at this point because <laughs> I have to keep concentration up on that, and I'm just gonna let my spiritual weapon do some stuff. Okay. So, uh, let's see. She is going to, let's see, that's 14. Uh, yeah, that's going to die. And that's going to, so, uh, Karhita takes out the other ghouls. Nice. Yay. And then it's Snake's turn. Snake. Okay. Um, Snake is going to wiggle on up to Adara and try to constrict the one that is close. I thought you were going to say constrict Adara, and I was like, excuse you. No, snake's not. No, snake's not priorities. Uh, is that a? Is that a? Okay, will a fifteen hit this time? I rolled a fourteen last time. Is a fifteen gonna do it? Not quite. It's okay, snake. You'll get there eventually. Just say she like dodges out of the way a little bit with the, the little entrails. Snake can't quite get to. The oh, did you use your D four of leadership already? I did not actually. Thank you for, for reminding me. Actually, no, I did, but I didn't use it for snake. Didn't use it for Snake. Snake gets one, too. Yay, Snake. Snake is part That's of the team. 16. Does a 16 hit? Sure does. Yeah! Okay. That's a one. I needed one. That's all I needed. <laughs> okay, so she is taking uh, 12 points of bludgeoning damage, and she is grappled and restrained. So now she is stuck in one place. Um, <laughs> it's constructing a dart isn't off the table. It's weird. She's not immune to grapple or restrain. Huh, that's yeah, fascinating. So, no, uh, snugs, snake hugs, as Draz helpfully put it, is a lower priority at the current moment. You will get snugs after you're not almost dead <laughs> and the threat of dying, and it'll be friendly snugs. Uh, so yes, I'd like to imagine snake walks up, twists around her, and then immediately like falls over, like constructing her. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Just restraining the guts. Perfect. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Alright, she's gonna try and attack the snake now and get snake off of her. So she's gonna have to make a uh, an escape TC. That is a nat 20. Mm. I can't tell if you just said nat 90, nat 1, or nat 9. Nat 20. Oh! It has a cat on it. Okay, Ooh. so she does. So she does get out. Weighted cat dice, and then cat she's dice. going to uh, tongue the snake with an eighteen. Yes, that will she's hit. gonna what? Have this. Have the snake give me a Constitution saving throw, please. Okay. 
I was gonna say, I feel like snakes should be immune to poison, and then I realized it's a constructor snake, not a, I don't know, mm -hmm. venomous snake. Uh, that's a thir that's a six, actually. Okay, so snake failed. Okay, that's fine. Um, and is going to take five, six, seven, eight. I'll I'll just give you total damage. Okay. Um, so that's um. If you want to give me the numbers too, I can also total it. It's not that bad of here. Plus four, so that's nine, ten total. Is that right? No. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 total damage. Okay. Also, at everyone in the chat, I love how tonguing the snake is where we draw the line here. I Everything know. else is fine, but the snake is the line. We are a classy, well, family no, friendly just show. To, like, think about every time you say that, though. Those words together, no. <laughs> <laughs> how will we get sponsors? <laughs> If we just keep talking about tonguing snakes in our combats. She just the goes... The snake is the least disturbing thing in the room. Thank you, Richard. The <laughs> salty. And, uh... You are... Uh, oh yeah, the ghouls are all dead. No more ghouls. Yeah, good job. Good job. No more of this wave of ghouls. No more of this wave of ghouls. Can't wait uh, till the next wave. Eliana is going to continue her leadership shouting. So anyone who has used their leadership gets another D4. Yay! And she's going to try and attack the Penangolin. That's going to hit. Yeah! One time. She hit one time and do half damage. I pretend I do not hear it. Yeah, you're right. You're right, Gwen. A little bit of damage. <laughs> uh, and just goes, take her out! Take her out! And Snake, or er, Snake? No. Penangolin is going to lick her. Ruh-roh. Ruh -ro. And just <gasps> hit, actually. Now she has to get me. Oh, she's going to succeed on her con saving throw, though, which is which is good for her. So that is. Four, six. Damage for her and a penangolin only heals. Two. All right, Adara, you're up. All right, I'm going to go over to the the penangolin and I'm going to hit it with an axe like a normal person. Uh. <laughs> I mean, if you don't have the hands to hold an axe, what are you supposed to do? Yeah, uh, does a 17 hit? Yeah, it does. Cool. Please take, well, um, that is 11 points of damage. Next attack. And add a d6 to that. And a d6! D d uh, oh, and another d6. two! Uh, <laughs> also, uh, in rolling the d6, I jostled the d20 I already rolled, but I'm pretty sure it hit because it was above 10. Which means my total is above 22. <laughs> oh, dang. So, nice. Uh, that is another oh, 16 points of damage. Good job, Pete. And next attack is a natural 20, finally! Uh, Yay! So... Uh, oh. Getting that 20 so many times on you. Uh, the credit has become the crit T. Uh, <laughs> yeah, this is this is my um, Phoenix Wright turnabout's fair play moment. Um, how beat up does she look? I don't want to use all my superiority dice on these members. Um... She looks, um, more than scratched. She looks bruised. Her entrails are hanging in a, a, a more soggy way right. than they were before. They're not as clung together. All right. She well, looks a little bit drippy. Ew. Uh, make me uh. a wisdom saving throw, please. All right. Oh, oh, oh. That is a 17. Um, all right, you will take 41 points of damage, and you are not Was that a fail for her wisdom save? No, okay. you are not frightened of me, but you do think very hard about it. Again. Very highly of you? No, you think very hard about being frightened of me. It's very close. Okay. 
Uh, as both of the, the vampires have just passed. My DC is a 17. Uh, Got it. And as a bonus action, I'm gonna bite her. Wait, was that my bite? Do it. No. I, I don't think so. so. Bonus action, I'm gonna bite her. That is a um, 19. No, not a 19. That is a 29 to bite the vampire. Go for it. Perfect. No, Draz, I forgot about that. I said it in the <laughs> chat. I said to quote Jess from an early episode, I like them dippy. And I have uh, not been able to stop thinking about that since oh, no. I said it. I'm not uh, kidding. Uh, I can remember nothing but that. Please, please take another 10 points of bite damage once you've recovered. Huh. So, how do you want to do this? Yay. All right. I, uh... I guess she, you know, flies over to harass Eliana or something. Um, so I just like run over there and like swing a couple times with my axe and then uh, take the vampire by the head and just like tear off a chunk with my teeth, drop the bits on the ground, uh, and just look at her again and go, you're welcome. Um, like I did before when I said I would go first, it's a callback. I love that. Uh, I and love that. <laughs> with my movement, I would like to go over to the mummy Mm-hmm. Um, Please do. What's she up to? Um, kind of just laughing. Okay. I'm going to action surge. Okay. Uh, and I, I would like to um, stab the mummy's head with my axe. So that's going to take me a second as I roll some dice. Um, so first attack is a... Uh, 17 to hit. You hit. All right. Uh, second attack, I think, is going to miss. That's a uh, 14. Well, how much damage? Roll me your damage oh, okay. for your X. Uh, minimum 10. So you hear, uh, you slash right through that mummy head. Just hear, <laughs> you fool. Mm. This is just a conduit. I'm in abyss. <laughs> you stupid girl. Uh, I turn back to Shy and I say, Shy, she's in the abyss. I need to go. Can you send me there? Uh, can I call a planar ally for a favor? You're gonna have to offer the pizza again, I think. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. Gotta gotta call Planar Ally for a favor. Okay. So uh who are you calling? Um, yes, who are you calling? I don't think I have to specifically call anyone. I just have to kind of send out my request when I do the spell. Uh, and I'm just like, I have a friend who needs a guide through the abyss. So, emerging, uh, when you call that, is a buff, masculine angel with bloody yes. stumps for wings. Oh. With with what for stumps? Bloodied stumps for wings. Ooh. And frosted tips and a puka shell necklace. <laughs> oh no, I was gonna say Shy only has hot friends, but I take it back. Shy only has Hollister friends. <laughs> like greetings. Hold so Um my name is Shy and this is Adara. This is my friend who needs a guide. To the abyss. Yeah. Girl, you need a guy. Chai. I heard you needed a guy. Chai, who the hell is this? I I I said guide. Um it, it, and Chai's just like, this is the person who can get you to the person that you need to kill. Alright. Oh yeah, I'll take you down to Abyss. Uh, my friends call me Bartleby. But, uh, you can just call me, uh, 
I'm going to think of something really cool in a second. Uh, All right, we'll start with Dickweed and work our way up. They call me Wave Rider. Mm. Oh, Dickweed out. We'll work our way up. I'm afraid you're going to have to earn that. Um, Take me to the abyss and we'll see how this goes. You're going to have to earn that, says Adaro Vagnuak Leto. I earn my titles. titles. So I was just like, and what would you like for payment for your services? Oh, me and your girl, we'll work that out. Ugh. All right. Um, thanks, and Shai. Remember, this is for this is for a round trip. If you bring her back safely, I'll have a bonus for you. Yeah, if I'm not back in like Yeah, we can do that. Yeah, like some gold to the temple or whatever, or like uh Oh I got it, I got it. Your uh the next village you save is is gonna be dedicated to the glory of Bartleby the Wave Rider. Uh, okay. Shy, if I'm not I'm back, gonna make a note of that. Shy, if I'm oh, not back in a sweet. week, can you just like start a summoning circle or something? Uh, I'll work it out. Thanks. Um, all right, friends, you people figure the rest of this out. I have a mummy on my to kill list, and unfortunately, she doesn't seem to be on this plane. Bartleby goes to put his arm around you. He goes, "Come on, baby, I'll show you all the hot spots in Abyss." I uh, intercept his hand and knock him to the ground and say, uh, "You will not touch me uh, without my permission. Try again." A pit of fire opens up around you, and he goes, "All right, all right. Get to know a fellow before that. I get it. I get it." You're one of those, like, like, I am regretting all of my life choices. I'm so sorry, Adara. I have dealt with worse. I can handle this, asshole. Um, yeah, uh, this is... You people figure out. There's ghouls coming, I think. Um, see ya. <laughs> I'm gonna Good jump into the portal to the abyss. Good luck, Adara. I packed you snacks. Where? Adara <laughs> says as she falls through the portal. They're in your backpack, like normal. <laughs> Where I usually put them. Goodbye, friends. Did this room now with a tarot gone uh, to abyss. Uh, going on a wild portal ride with a uh, radiant idol. Uh, Eliana and uh, Karhita just kind of look at you. They're like, Was that? Could you have summoned an angel this whole time? We were doing fine. I don't. I don't know the the details of it, uh, but I do believe that it's kind of hard to get them to fight for you, if I'm remembering correctly. Yes, it's it's different for each summoning, and it's kind of a toss up whether or not they'll help you or just watch and laugh. Yeah, um, and most of the time, uh, it's kind of at least with some of them that I've met. Uh, if you summon them, sometimes they just sit there and laugh, and sometimes they even fight with uh, fight it's, against you because it's funnier. It's basically it depends on whether or not you call them for something trivial. Um, they tend to get really, really difficult in in those cases. So I try not to rely on them too much. Yeah. Get out of here. Uh, you'll have uh, some time to check out those golden lances if you would like. And also the alcoves now have arcane runes. Uh, or no, they always had arcane runes on the inside of them. Okay. But well, if you want to just head out, uh, there is that door that was right next to where the mummy was seated. If I don't get at least one of those arcane lances, I'm just going to never hear the end of it from Adara. Um, I was gonna say yeah. I, I was gonna grab one just in case of Adara, and also because I wanna, I wanna see if I can like swing it, you know, like, like cool. Yeah, you keep me an Arcana check. Yeah, sure. Why not? Why don't we find out today? That's a sixteen. So you can see the 
magic in these lances is broken, but these are very valuable looking lances made out of solid gold. Why is they're used for weapons then? Because solid gold is not that strong. You could sell them for something. Yeah. Yeah, and it was sure. probably more of the spell conduit aspect of them rather than actual yeah. um, value as a stabby weapon. That's kind of a shame. I feel like Adara would have really liked it if you could have just, like, given her solid gold to match her other stuff. To match her teeth? Yeah, her teeth and her jewelry and her nose piercing and her necklace and her little headband and her bracelet and her armband and her belt. <laughs> I will say Shy is far more concerned about the person that she left injured in the corridor and um, will be very focused on getting that person to some help Yes, it um, can actually heal her all the way instead of only partially. Yeah, that yeah. is that is very fair. So, um, idea, uh, we, um, we go. I'm gonna put the lances in my backpack. Um, I am also going to go uh, set the bodies of those penangalons on fire so okay. they don't come back. If that sounds good to you, shy, and then we can pick up that uh, that person that you healed, and then we can go take them to an actual doctor. Who is better with stuff than I am. And, uh, no offense than you are. It's like, oh no, I'm more of a fighter than a healer. I heal some things, but this is a bit beyond my abilities. Okay, good. I'm glad we're in agreement here. Um, so on the way back, uh, uh, I am going to, uh, look at the bodies of the Penangalons that they had inhabited. I am going to, uh, cast Produce Flame, and I am going to just, like, throw them down and light the bodies on fire. Sweet! Yeah! So I'm going to, uh, burn them. Okay. And then I will, uh, come with, uh, Shy. Until we, until we go. So like, let's go, uh, get the person. Yeah, getting Sita and then heading back out. You feel a breeze above you and see a circular shaft near the top. Some of Eliana's men are waiting and lower a rope down. And Karahita and Eliana both thank you. Uh, Sita is especially grateful for saving her life. Mm, yes. And uh, Karahita, I'm, I'm sure they're transformed now, but I'll continue to look for the rest of the midwives see if they're transformed and um your friend is she going to be all right in the abyss oh radar is very competent yes and we do have a plan if we don't hear from her within a set amount of time also she's Here. technically from the abyss genetically yeah. <laughs> yes we a lot of people do forget that um yeah adara is very hardy much like the abyss <laughs> Well, here, take take this with you, and she hands you one half of a pair of sending stones. So we'll look for the rest of the midwives and look for any more information on Yari. But if your friend takes her out, let us know. Yeah, we'll be sure to let you know. Ah, uh, thank you. Of course. Um, yes. Ah. Uh, And you watch as the women and their comrades disappear into the night. Goodbye! <laughs> Adara, you arrive in a pit of fire and the sound and clamor of battle oh surrounding you. Bartleby just goes, it's a babe. You want to look for this Nyari chick right away, or you want to yeah. explore and see the town? No, I got a time limit. You like it here? Well, it's not something we like to talk about upstairs, but, you know, that's where the action's at. You look like a girl that can handle some action. I am simultaneously gaining more and less respect for you at the same time, and it is a weird feeling. Well, he pulls out this flail and goes, let's... Kill this demon chick, yeah? Yeah. Rock and roll. All right. 
<laughs> is there anything else you'd like to do, friends? Um, after they leave, Ophelia's gonna turn to Shy and go, like, uh, where do you think Harriet ended up? Well, she was heading on ahead to the festival. It probably hasn't started yet. Do we just go and help and hope we meet her there? I think that's a good plan. And Adara knows we'll be there. Yeah. So, yeah. hopefully. I, I don't think we're bad luck, do you? Um, Shy looks directly into the camera. Truthfully, <laughs> if we aren't bad luck, I don't know what we are. <laughs> See, I personally think it's that other people are intimidated when we show up because we kind of freak people out, and I think that makes people act a fool. Like, it makes people act, like, more weird. The, the thing is, either we're bad luck, or there's a prophecy I haven't found yet. Either way, it would be really bad luck for us to have a prophecy about us. So, I'd say... Unequivocally, that means we are some form of bad luck. And that was Call of a Mother by <laughs> Anthony Beale. <laughs> that was a good ending. I like that. Thank you so Aww. much for joining us, everybody. Stick around us. Uh, so you can hear where uh, you can find all of these wonderful people online and because we're going to do a raid. Um, so, yeah. But first, hey, Adara, who's now in the abyss. Who are you? Where can we find you? <laughs> I'm Gwen DB all over the internet, and I'm in hell. Uh, <laughs> you can find me mostly on Twitter, where I post art and updates for Uncaged Goddesses. Volume 5 of Uncaged is happening, and I'm one of the people running it, and that's very cool and exciting. Uh, so keep an eye out for that. Also, um, I've been doing a lot of art for it, so you might actually see some art updates again for me from me in the near future. <laughs> what a surprise. Hey, where can we find you? Hi, my name is Ink. You can find me on Twitter and you can find me uh, on Twitch where I used to stream, don't really do it that much anymore. Um, as at these dead pens, I like to meme and scream on Twitter about things. Uh, this week, stand in solidarity with people who are striking. Uh, you, uh, a better working condition for some is a better working uh, standard for all of us. Uh, I am also helping to contribute to Uncaged Goddesses, so I'm very excited about that. I'm also contributing to some Unbreakable uh, Unbreakable Anthology volumes, which should be coming out soon. And I am very thankful that I get to work with these people, and that I hope Uncaged Goddesses is just as fun as it is doing this show. Hey, where can we find you? Uh, hi, I'm Zan Larson, also known as Paylight Rabbit on Twitter and Instagram, and I do a lot of art stuff as well. I think I'm the only one here not in Uncaged Goddesses so far. Um, but I have here. in all of the other ones. <laughs> You're only, in, only, only in all of the other Uncaged things, um, except Volume 1. But that was mainly because of how things shuffled out. Um, but I have been in things like the Big Book of Cats and the Book of Seasons and Eyes Unclouded, so there's a lot of stuff that you can see my art in, and I have a store online where you can buy my artwork. Heck yeah. And I'm Jess. I actually have a Kickstarter happening right now, the Yay. Slayer's Almanac. You can support it if you like Slayers, uh, which is really fun. It was nominated for for a bunch of ennies. I wrote a town for the Slayer's Almanac that is run entirely by hags called Gaspardly Hollow. It has free healthcare and adoptable familiars and no children for mysterious reasons. There's no, but you know, I, I kind of made my ideal town. I was gonna it's say, just... <laughs> sounds perfect, no follow up. Right? Uh, so yeah, thank you so much for joining us uh, tonight and every Friday that you're here. Next week, we are playing Something This Way Slithers by Paul Kiter, also from volume three. And we will be short in Adara because she's in the abyss. Uh, so join us for that. Right now, we are going to go raid Punkle Nix. So tell Nix that we all said hi. 
And we love you all so much. Take care of yourselves and have a great night, okay? Bye. Bye. Oh, I forgot. Support our Patreon. We're going to go shoot a video now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> give Good us money, friends. unless you're Alexis, in which case, stop giving us money. Bye. Heck yeah. <laughs> Bye. to run to the restroom and then we can film our behind the scenes.